What's up? Do you know, I, I, I know it's like, it's easy to make What's fun. Up? It's easy to make fun. I thought that stuff was funny back in the day, <laughs> and I don't, and I don't mind it now either. Yeah, it was kind of funny at the time. It, it was fun to do it ironically got, for a while. It obviously got a bit shit, but then <laughs> I think it made a comeback after a period of time where it was yeah. so late to say again. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it. we should do it. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back again and again. <laughs> like, uh, what's up? What's up? Did come back? <laughs> Did you not allowed to talk yet? We've not introduced you, Capone. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the live stream. The recording of uh, TCGS episode. Matt. Three, two, three, two, three, 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 two, three. Yeah. Very... Oh, a milestone. Ten away from uh, a triple three. A triple. A triple Bloody hell. Triple three, the classic. classic. Yeah, the, <laughs> the three. classic milestone. Classic number. Talks about. The classic number. <clears throat> yeah, Capone Adams here. Capone. Oh my God. How long's it been? Uh, just about? over two years. Oh, is it just over two years? I'm absolutely fascinated with that massive coffee cup that you've put those weeds in <laughs> that's behind you there. So, can you go and stand next to it? Can you get in it? It looks <laughs> massive. <laughs> Can you do like, the show is it from a inside it? Thing or is it? Oh, I see. So it is like it's just a vase that's like right behind oh, you. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. It's a vase that's right next to you. Okay. It looks like it's on the floor behind yeah. you. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> it looks huge. <laughs> that's great. I'm just, I'm just trying to be like a you know, I'm almost certain that, that he's been working on that. That, getting that right for the past yeah. two years. Um, <laughs> no, I've been doing that all day. <laughs> and the, can you see the lights? The spot? You can see the light. Very nice. Oh, yeah, lighting. Lighting. The yeah. neon lights. How you doing, all right? Yeah. Uh, Amber's got COVID, my partner. Okay. Um, but I'm managing to survive. Oh, you're, you're coping, are you? Okay, good. As long as you're all right. <laughs> you're all right. Okay, there. Fine. That's uh, good. Just for. Um... Should we save this? I mean, this is going to be gold okay. no matter what. You know, this is going to be gold. Should we just get into it? Right. Yeah, we absolutely have to yeah, save this. I mean, I'll say this on the show, but if you're watching now, obviously Capone's not editing the, editing the live stream. Yeah. yeah. Please get out now if you're watching because you're going to miss all the editing. I think so. people will be quite happy to consume both, though. I think that's how, I think. I think people are probably looking forward to watching it. Raw and then hearing the yeah, edit, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So think of this like the Matrix with the two pills. You can either consume the blue or the red. Don't consume both. You can have both. You That's the one. thing. <laughs> it's very dangerous to consume both. Um, you don't know whether you're coming or going, do you? Hey. That, you that's what they meant. They talked about it in the Matrix Four, actually. Yeah. I don't know if you're coming or going. That's part of the script. Um, so uh, Capone will be editing the show this week. Uh, I know Matt's having a heart attack, hoping that. Sh- Capone does it in time so that it's issued on or it's uh it's published on Wednesday. Um well, sure so be fine. You got you got a deadline, Capone, to work to. Uh but yeah, this what is, is that tomorrow end of day tomorrow? Uh yeah, that'd be nice. What time that is for you. I'll I'll try and get it for Wednesday morning. Well look at look at that space. <laughs> <laughs> the show's at Wednesday morning, so you can't that's not gonna work. No, no need to call him that. Uh. You do you take as long as you want, Capone. We can't we can't limit your art. It um, won't be more than like Wednesday. But then if, <laughs> look at Matt. But, but I know. It goes take, it take as long as you want, schedule. but then David will have to fill the questions from Twitter, Discord, email. I'm, I'm literally just gonna go Capone Adam's fault. He's missed the deadline. And then you're going to get into even more trouble. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Right. um, (laughs) Should we get on with the show? Yeah. Do we need to explain uh, to Capone how we do this intro bit? I think you know, don't you? The three, two, one, go. Yeah, but then then does he know that we then play the intro? And we all sit in silence. Well, you you guys can talk, but I have to sit in because I can't be asked muting my microphone. I don't know this. And then then I'll give a thumbs up. And that means then Dave will start. Okay. You ready? Everyone hit record, please, on your recording devices. Will do. <laughs> I'm confused. So, you, are you doing a 3-2-1, Matt? We're doing a 3-2-1, Matt. Once you've been recording, yeah. 
once you're recording, I'll yeah. go three, two, one, and everyone will say Matt, and then we go silent for like 30 seconds, all right? Oh, and that then has the changed Well, no, I'm saying you, you don't have to go silent, just me. Yeah, okay, but let's not... But that's just while the first. intro plays. Yeah. Right, ready? Yeah. You recording? I'm not recording, so I should be recording now. Yeah, your your own voice, yeah. It's like okay, well, anyway, if, if you, okay, I was recording. recording, so let's just stop and we'll do a we'll yeah, start again. Yeah, thinking, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good start. Off to a flyer, lads. All right, start again. Go. Right, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, everyone's hit record, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three, two, one, Matt. 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 <laughs> not said Matt. He didn't say Matt. No, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. You haven't started the thing, have you? Yes. Stop it. Yeah. Stop everyone, it. stop it. Okay, okay. So, I'm so stopping Matt my has... recording. I've stopped okay, my we'll recording. Stop the recording again. Hold on. So I'll, I'll wait for, for those of you... Dave to say go. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No. So I didn't say Matt. <laughs> yeah. So it is. Yeah. We'll so... all press record, and then they will go three, two, one. We all say Matt at the same time. <laughs> okay. Got it. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay. Hit record. Hit record. Hit record. Yeah. Three, two, one. Matt. 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 Here we go. Welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name is David Turner. I'm here with Sean Bell. Hello. Matt Murray. Hello. And if you didn't get to the end of last week's show, this is going to be a surprise for you. No James Farley. Now, that's not the surprise. No, that, that's pretty that much... That's not the... So that, you know, that, that's quite consistent yeah, these yeah, days. Yeah. Um, we've got Capone Adam. Capone Adam, after two years of being away from the show... Your last uh, performance, once again, splitting our audience 50-50. <laughs> uh, As ever. You're back. That's not, that's not true. It's always true. <laughs> it's always, always every time true. you're on. You were really worried about that last time, that you're going to get a split. And then we, we were all surprised that we got a lot of positive feedback. It was mostly yeah. positive. No, we got, no, I wouldn't say mostly positive. There was a, still a lot. A, I would okay. say there was still a lot of people that said, that they were never going to listen to the show again. Yeah, if you, you ruined the on. show. That what was... have you done? Um, if you're if you're listening to this on the podcast, um, Capone Adam is editing this week. You probably already know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> they will. <laughs> they will. Um, and if, if 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 this isn't your bag, then you can go and listen to the unedited version on our YouTube channel. Um, Matt, what's our YouTube channel? I can't even remember it. Just search for TCGS on YouTube. Yeah, do that. Do we that. We can go now. at TCGS now, I think. Which is mm. the new thing. We can do what, Capone? We can no, I was just saying it's like the blue pill, isn't it? If they Yeah, but the, the problem YouTube. is we would that that refers to a conversation <laughs> that we had before we hit record, so they have no idea what you're talking about. Actually the joke's on you because it will it will make sense when, when you hear the edit. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, right, I'm going to crowbar in some blooper references. I love this. You're just going to include well, a, like, like a precy of the story of the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'd like to, we'd like to start the show by um, announcing our Patreon po uh, producers for this month. They're the Four Nils crew, and they are Aaron Pat Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, Simon Nelson, Jack Oven, Moomin Biscuit, Trans Rights to Human Rights, Dave Ernsberger, Colin Brown, Gazman, Rocketman76, Grey Dragon Claw. Fred Fenge, Smooth Monkey, Don Whis Don Whisker. No. Fucking hell! It's been a while. It's, it's yeah, you've had a good, good streak. Up. I've had yeah, a good old yeah, run with that. Yeah. Uh, Colin Sm Smith, uh, Richard Sawyer, Jonathan Edwards, and Tom S. They are the full Nils crew. Thank you so much for supporting us. We really do appreciate it. You can support us by going to patreon.com forward slash tcgs and choosing one of the various different um, uh, tiers that we got there. The best one being the full Nils crew. Join the Full Nails crew. 
join us. Um, so, are yeah. we going to talk about the elephant that is inside of the room? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, are we? I don't know. What we... Okay. Uh, well, let's do it. Go on. So, cast your minds back in, what was it, December 2020. I had a lot joined... going on then. Yeah. I joined the page. <laughs> but... Oh, did happen then? You're Are right. you referring to COVID? Yeah, yeah. yeah. referring to so, COVID and the lockdown and everything. Okay, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure. Okay, so yeah, back in then, I joined Patreon as a Jill Fridge, and <laughs> I paid forty pounds for this to be a, like a funny running joke. Mm. Yeah, and it got ignored for multiple weeks until. Uh, Gary Dooton brought it up. <laughs> and right. I don't know. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm not upset about it, but it's kind of I funny. I mean, you here, sound upset it? about it. You sound upset about it. What, what do you mean it's kind of funny? Because weren't you the... Because so, so Jack, we had Jack Oven, that's it. Oh, that's Jack right. Oven. Yeah, it was the counterpart to... You yeah. were Jill Fridge. Yeah. And we didn't pick up on the We didn't clock no. that for so no, long. Jack and Jill. You know, like the nursery. Right? Yeah, we're not yeah, the hill, I'm yeah. aware of that now. Yeah, Jack yeah. and Jill, yeah. oven and fridge. The classic. Yeah, oven and fridge. <laughs> <laughs> like appliances that live in the same area. Um, well, me, on behalf of the TCGS crew, uh, Adam, I, I apologise for not getting your joke. Same. It's okay. I'm, I'm not expecting my money back or anything. No, well, you're not getting it back. Well, no, just, just as well, really. <laughs> I think you deserve 40, 40 pounds. This ca- this cannot be the first time someone hasn't got a joke from you. This can't be the first. This can't be shocking. Yeah, but they, I haven't paid like forty pounds to make the joke. <laughs> right, good point. Good point. Um, I, mean, so I think those... work on the jokes. Keep Ooh. keep up the gagging. I reckon. Ooh. It's a bit strong from Matt. He's offering advice you, to you. You've laughed um... at worst. Paul Nelson before. <laughs> it's true. It is true. It is absolutely true. The Simon um, Nelson, for instance, great. What, what so those that? of you that don't know uh, Capone, Adam, how would you sum yourself up, Capone? How would you describe yourself to our listeners that have come along since uh, your last episode? What, what's the elevator pitch? Yeah. Uh, just like a nervous um, person. <laughs> okay, so we've oh, got a nervous cool. person on the show um, who, uh, I mean, you've been with the show since Joy, the first episode of Joypod, I think. I started getting messages from you with video game ideas, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where the whole Peter and Molly do thing came from, which is what uh, I'm kind of known for. I what? guess I should have added that in my pitch. You should have, yeah. <laughs> should have added that in your pitch. You, you're the man behind Peter Moll and you. That, when it wasn't it just Peter Moll and you too at one point. That's what you started with, and then yeah. you come up with a better name. You yeah. nicked it. Yeah, exactly. And that ended up with you being interviewed by Wired at Peter Moll and you's house, was it? No, in his studio. Oh, in his <laughs> studio. In his goddess studio. God. Oh, oh, they wow. were making a uh, curiosity when I oh, that's oh, right. Jesus, and how much did you have paid to have seen that just the first moments they met and everything oh god that to be a fly on the wall when that happened uh, no not interested Sean what I was, I was shaking your head like as if I don't want a part of that I was no I was <laughs> no I was just it shaking my head at how the whole curiosity <laughs> thing panned out yeah, really. that was the weird, whole it? state of it. it just, yeah, yeah, I feel like that game was so ahead of its time. No, I don't it... think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Like, I think the idea for the game was ahead of its time. Oh, no, I, I think yeah, if the yeah. if the prize had been something actually quite good, yeah, I think it and would. If... Everyone would have been like, "Yeah, do you know what? Fair dues. That was quite interesting." But the fact that it was the shittest thing. And if each layer, up. if each layer genuinely had a different game attached to it, like he promised that he, I mean, you oh, know, it's yeah. classic Molyneux stuff. But when yeah. we went to see that chat, and he was like, "Yeah, there'll be like a noughts and crosses layer. Mm. There'll be a layer where you can like play games. There'll be like a minesweeper layer. There'll be like a mine in one of the things that just wipes out the whole mm-hmm. layer of the cube." We've got all these ideas for each layer. Yeah. Never happened. Well, Never. and it's a shame because it's not like him to overpromise and <laughs> to deliver it. <laughs> he loves it that boy. Um. Capone, how you been? How have you been? How are you doing at the moment? Are you okay? Get to know you, guess. Get to know you. Oh, after. We're not. Oh, right. Okay. Um, (laughs) Um, (laughs) Jingle insert here. So, yeah, I mean, I'm doing okay. My partner has COVID at the moment. 
but I'm right. doing okay. Is she what is she okay or? Yeah, like she was asking for uh, Cadbury's chocolate mini eggs the other day, and right. she can't go out, so I had to it's go. Not the and... season, is it? It's not the season. Did you tell her it's not the season? I get mini eggs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're all year round now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah no, mini eggs. Yeah. No, yeah. not the Cadbury's ones. Aren't they yeah. just mini? Easter? Cadbury's mini eggs, the little ones in the shells. Yeah, yeah. You can get them whenever. They're not, they're not exclusive. Not to Easter. Fucking down here, mate. Just Easter, Easter only. I down thought here. Lot's had everything. It doesn't even have yes. mini eggs. No, we've got traditions. I like you lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you get us some mini eggs? Oh yeah. Where was I going with that? So <laughs> I was going. To, <laughs> We'd love to I know. was going to the shop and thinking. Yeah, like I, I suppose I've got a question. Like, do you get past a certain age where it's not? appropriate to walk into a convenience store and only buy Cadbury's mini eggs. Oh, right. Because nah. right. I was no, thinking, I think like, right, should right. I get milk or bread to go? <laughs> and it'd be like, <laughs> oh, the eggs are just to go <laughs> <What>? with it. <laughs> what, just in case you were going to have a, a milky, eggy sandwich? <laughs> Is that, <laughs> surely well, that's no, because I think going into a little convenience store to buy bread or milk it's acceptable. <laughs> I yeah. do think that, like every now and then, like if I'm going to the shops on the way home from work, so I just go and get yourself dinner or whatever, and I've got like a single steak, some like ready to ready to cook chips, and then and and like some four beers or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> when they're scanning them, they're going, "You got a night in on your own, haven't you?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but but mini eggs? Would you go into a like you? Personally, Dave, would you go into a convenience store and buy just Cadbury's mini eggs on yes. their own? Yeah, I mean, I've got kids, so that's kind of a that's a, sort of a regular. Yeah, you, you've got it out, haven't you? You can just say, "Oh, it's for the kids." That's yeah. what I do, yeah, to make sure that they don't think I'm a. Yeah, he shouts it. <laughs> these, these are just, just for the kids. Just my children. Just for the kids, yeah. these. Uh, it's just yeah. for the kids. Yeah. I'm not a perv. I'm not yeah, a perv. No. I'm a perv. Just really good dad. Yeah, yeah, really I'm good dad. Dad, yeah, just I'm not gonna yeah. eat them on my own. Yeah. Look at this guy over here, he's bought mini eggs, but also some milk and some bread. He's definitely yeah. a pervert. What's he covering up for, eh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever wanted to like just buy like a mark? <laughs> I've always wanted to, just as an experiment to see mm. what happens. Buy like a single Mars bar and a pack of condoms. Just boom, there you go. That's my that's my evening story. <laughs> <laughs> just to see sort of reaction. Mars bars for afterwards. <laughs> yeah. <That's> the... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so you're good though. You you enjoy life in Canada. You don't miss um you don't miss uh, England too much. Been over there ages now, haven't you? Yeah, eleven years. Yeah, it's too much. Have you got the? Have you picked up the accent like Sean said you absolutely would? Yeah. I can't talk about that. That's no. something from a podcast that no one's heard yet. It's also not quite uh, what I said, but <laughs> let's not worry about that. Exactly what you said. I'm going to bring that up later. <laughs> um, yeah, 11 years. So, uh, yeah, anything you miss about England? When was the last time you come over? I think it was six years ago now. Yeah, yeah, I remember because you went out for a meal with Matt and his family and didn't come and see me. No, I didn't. No, uh, Adam counselled that. Did he really? Whoa. You know, when I was going back through old episodes i came across one episode where like you two were burgled at some point <laughs> oh what, yeah at the, at the same time and i reached out to matt and checked that it was all okay but when it happened to you david That's i didn't right. reach out and you were really upset <laughs> That's right. That's on right. Podcast. So this was early on so in I'm TCGS. Sorry. Like, I mean, what was it? It was probably episode like five or six. Matt got burgled. Right? Yeah, very early on. Yeah. For like three or four weeks. Mm. And um, yeah, you sent him a lovely email about how, you know, I'm thinking of you and it's really stressful. <laughs> really sweet, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And I was I was burgled the year before and I got a fuck all from you. <laughs> like, it was really upsetting. It makes sense that I'd have done that for you. And then when, when it happened to Matt, being like, oh, that done that before <laughs> <laughs> don't overplay well, no yeah because what happens you probably forgot when david got burgled like, i better make amends by messaging matt yeah that's true that's yeah right. yeah that's probably what happened actually. i didn't you just maybe you just figured that dave can handle it right dave, yeah that's dave's good point. Very fragile i am dave's tough that's true he's i am yeah. made of tougher stuff and i yeah. um now listen we get into your feedback listeners but first, I just want to know, just get some sort of idea of where Capone feels the show is at the moment, how how it's going. What what, what are you thinking of TCGS these days? Do you still listen every week? Yeah, I listen to every 
Uh, even Marvel Calls, actually. Oh, I'm right, okay. Even Marvel Calls. Even Marvel Calls. Even Marvel, Marvel Calls. Yeah. Uh, okay. That bunch of trash. <laughs> I listen to the what bonus What do you think shows? of where the show's at at the moment? You've always been very opinionated about what we do. So what do you think of where we're at? You, did you enjoy the live stuff? You know, all of that. What, what, what are your thoughts? So I've been listening to, like, really old episodes, like, back in uh, Play Radio days. And it, it's, like, night and day now. You are, you've really changed, Dave. <laughs> the, like, in, what so like? good. <laughs> You were really trying to, I think, reach like a very mainstream audience outside of. <laughs> What's that? It's a lot more focused now. You you were like you know like a Saturday morning TV presenter, <laughs> like kids show, like you know really trying to get excited about everything. Mm. But now it's a lot more uh, professional. You think I've mellowed a bit, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, so it's just your feedback directed at me, is it? Well, back then it was really just... It was you, you and Michael. Mm. I've not yeah. gone back to the ones that had Matt and Sean in it. So One much. James. And oh, yeah, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad he's not on this episode, because this episode does not put him in a good light. <laughs> should we get to the feedback Matt Uh, yes we're going to start with freelance police on listening to the latest show there was some chat about Logan Paul offering bowel movement guidance I uttered Logan Poo out loud while on the Birmingham (laughs) International Shuttle moments later after some concerning looks from my fellow passengers Matt dropped the same joke don't listen to him Matt if you want to do some joke writing collaboration hit me up you might have also considered Poogan Paul Keep being great, guys. Oh, okay, you're welcome to him. I mean, I'll be yeah, honest, but, but then I what's the considered Poog and Paul, but it's a good one for later. <laughs> but also, what's the merit in collaborating with someone who has the same ideas as you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they can both edgy, like they just nod at each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking of that. Yeah, yeah. That's every other video game podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I agree, mate. No, you fucking don't. Don't lie. Don't lie because you want to keep the peace. <laughs> no one wants to keep the peace. Oh, yeah, no, that is shit, mate. Oh, we are friends, really. No, you're not. <laughs> the moment that microphone goes off, you hate each other. <laughs> Separate WhatsApp groups. Whereas we actually... So have we, but at least we admit it. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, I was going to say, we actually all like each other. We lie to upset each other. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> that That's how it works. works. Yeah. yeah, I thought a lot about Logan Poo in, uh, in a day since last week's show. And, I, you know, should I have done it, should I not have done it? I mean, I feel like I, I, sometimes I wish I just didn't say the first thing that comes into my brain. But also, <laughs> sometimes that's, that's where the magic lives. So I was yep. going to keep doing it. And sometimes the there's a Logan Poo. Sometimes there's something. And then and maybe Adam, you could put in a funny example there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to say, it's very common for you to, like, come up with a really good punchline. And then it just gets ignored. Name one. I've got one for the edit oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> he's already forgotten it that's the sad thing um, um yeah also be... also if you could every time i speak if you could insert one of my funny jokes as well that oh, cheers mate <laughs> the hours as you got they get acknowledged, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> i like matt jokes. <laughs> okay um, mariah carey all i want for wow. christmas is logan poo Okay, that's... okay. there's Macaroni. Dave bullying James because he made some news up when a few minutes before he decided that Chris Pratt's background was blurred by Nintendo based on a feeling. <laughs> no more James bullying. <laughs> Without his news, the podcast will be a lot shorter. Yeah, hold on. True. I'm not the newsman. I'm not James Newsman. So I can say what I want. Well, this, yeah, like the the news has a like a pipeline, doesn't it? Where James... <laughs> Does James it? is James is the source, and then we no, do we no, do the conjecture based source. on that, right? You're a gamer, gamer is the, the source. source. Well, you know what I mean. James is the conduit. No, but yeah. So like, <laughs> so <laughs> he's the lens through which we receive the news. So if that lens is a bit blurry, or it's got some muck on it, right? We then can't do our best work based <laughs> off the information we've received from it. So James just has to give it us like it is. Yeah. James and then is a newsman. Yeah. I'm not yeah. newsman. Des Macaroni, yeah. if that is your real name. 
which I don't uh, think it is. I think it is. <clears throat> okay, Jake Barlow, just wanted to point out the irony in Sean being pulled up for his creative interpretation of Nico Bellic. Only for, Sean, only for David to say, don't get me wrong, I like the flurry. I like the flurry. <laughs> I can only assume David meant to say flourish and wasn't oh, yeah. simply declaring his appreciation for the Golden Arches famous ice cream delight. <laughs> I actually, I, I assume David was saying that, you know, me saying that was like a, a bit of light snowfall on yeah, the yeah, skin. Yeah, like that flurry. I'm you know, sure I've heard that in context before, but as John Denser keeps pointing out, I say things that no one else has heard Definitely. in their life, you know, so mm. um, probably not. But yeah, a flurry, like it's a flurry. It's like a little, yeah, it's like a little, um, ooh, little well, wee. No, that's a you know, flourish. A, that's a, a flourish. flurry is a, is a is bit a of flourish, snowfall. but also a flurry. Next, uh, <laughs> next bit of feedback, Matt. Adam, uh, I assume it's not you, Adam. Hi, guys. Just wanted to say that the Project Zeus is from an episode of Peep Show where Alan conceives of an ill-formed hollow plan and gives Mark an impossible task of detailing it. Not sure if James had subconsciously had this in mind, but yeah, either way, it's a name... Did. Uh, it's a name I'd avoid because Twitter memes would have a field day. Thanks. Yeah, he's the, 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 the James. James has nicked that because oh, I, um, I don't think he consciously nicked it though. Oh, he likes Peep Show. I'm does sure he? he? Does I think he's a fan of Peep Show. Well, yeah, but so I am I. But then I didn't even twig. Like it's been that long since. I mean, who who's seen that episode of Peep Show in the last James five did years? Last week. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. It exposed. Just the a little newsman. bit of prep for the podcast. Newsman exposed. If any of us here, we would call it, that's the episode title. Uh, John Cheatham, hello TCGS lads. On the conversation about CD Project Red announcing three games to launch across a six-year period, after they just spent two years dealing with the disastrous launch of one game, it does seem far-fetched. There are examples of single-player platform approach that I think they could use, though, especially Assassin's Creed. AC Valhalla only actually ended earlier this year with the Ragnarok expansion, as new landmasses and quests have been added since it launched. Weirdly, AC Odyssey only ended recently with a small additional island and questline to close out Cassandra's Where story is this going? and cross over with Valhalla. We'll find out. It's an interesting approach, as presumably it might give get devs more time uh, and more of a chance to build on a game world and engine that they're already familiar with and focus on refining the gameplay. For players, you don't have to build up a whole new character and start again with all your skill points and so on. Maybe this is what we'll get for a new Witcher trilogy. With CD Project Red been able to reuse bits of the game world and NPCs to sell a trilogy's worth of stories over the six-year period. Personally, I'll be well up for it. By the way, thanks for all the laughs and entertainment. The show is stronger than ever recently. Thank Sent you. to you from my desk in the Kek Seng Tower office block in Singapore. Hey, what's nice. up, Singapore? Shout out. We're big over there. We are, we are big we over are. there. We are. We are. We're currently um, planning our next TCG on TCGS say, yeah. con in Singapore. Um, uh, you coming to that one, Capone? Singapore? No. We're going to get a narrow boat okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to Singapore. Um, how close would we need to get for you to turn up to TCGS Con? What are we talking? Uh, Four blocks. Would it have to be Canada? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You couldn't go to a different... I mean, Canada's country. quite big. What about uh, the Rockies? Newfoundland? So, a big pardon? Uh, Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah, Newfoundland, yeah. Newfoundland. Okay, um, I didn't follow that email at all, I'm afraid. The um, the idea was that they'll have like the same kind of landmass um, and add small little bits here and there using the same character to explore new bits. But you know, the the world and a lot of stuff has already been built because you may have seen it in other areas. But there's like, oh, there's like a new landmass off this part of the off this part of the. the I mean, globe. it was you know, just... it was me that included this in the doc so i you know I'll, I'll accept responsibility for this but now, now that i'm hearing it in full that is basically what we said last week is it not yeah yeah <laughs> i mean you know um i think actually that is quite uh, you know when you look at um far cry do you remember that far cry prime no, far cry <laughs> far cry primal had the same um map as one of the other far cries so it was far cry 4, oh, did it but they did enough to completely mm. change the look of it all. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Mm. And there was people showing the map side by side. They go, look, they're the same. This is lazy. But like, you I wouldn't recognise anything. Yeah. It's crazy how different they've made it. And um, well, I mean, look at James's favourite uh, video game series. Fucking rehash that map every bloody year, don't they? So uh, well, yeah, exactly. and I think, yeah. and that's, and that's, 
uh, like that proves that you can make that interesting like because you're seeing the you're seeing that space like change over time like partly just due to you know the work like the world at large but also the events within the story and how they've affected it i think it's really interesting i don't think everyone should do it but it's i think it, it shows that it works are you i do you know i tried to start cyber i'm in a gaming rut at the moment i tried mm-hmm. to start cyberpunk again the other day not from mm-hmm. the beginning mm-hmm. but pick up where i left off and i loaded it up and i went oh my god i've done this about eight times over the past like two months tried to play this again because <laughs> i'm seeing the same johnny Silverhands fucking <laughs> cutscene again <coughs> ways, oh, and i was just like oh, I, can't, I can't i can't i think i'm done i think i'm just got it in my head that i'm never going back to it now which is probably for the best Probably, probably for right. the best. I mean, okay. see what this DLC turns out like. That could be, that could be really good. I bet that um, Cyberpunk made over 20 million sales, which is mm. really surprising. Yeah, and that's yeah, even no, after it's... all the refunds, right? Yeah, it's been like yeah. a massive success, financially. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I think we'll it's see. because, what did they say? Um, any press is bad press or something like that <laughs> that is what they say that's the any, line any, yeah any yeah. press is bad press yeah yeah that's the that's famous saying what they say. yep. yeah oh, such a shame isn't it when you get press yeah it's oh, always bad as well again, it's bad. Yeah. but if it's Terrible. bad it gets on twitter but if it's oh, yeah. not bad so, it so doesn't go say... on twitter so yes. pe- more people see it Oh, so you're saying they fuck the game on purpose for, you to know, get on Twitter. loads of engagement. <laughs> to get on Twitter. All the likes. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 putting... the bug free version was ready to go from day yeah. one. They're, they're just like, like, let's just give them the shit beta let's version. Let's give them the shit version. Just, we can yeah, get yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. Are we yeah. on Twitter? Yeah, we're on Twitter. Okay. Were we on Twitter before? Yeah, but now we're on Twitter. Yeah, Oof. and now we are like 10 retweets. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you get this idea from? The Sonic movie. Good, good point. Good point. Yeah, look, this, 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 look, this one guy keeps tweeting at us about how his vehicle keeps disappearing. We know. <laughs> <laughs> we built it that way. <laughs> and, and where are you telling us about it? On Twitter. Job done. Everyone high fives in the uh, CD Projekt Red office. Um, okay, should we move on? Yes, mock turtle soup. In defence of James's bedroom locks, a previous house I lived in had lockable bedroom doors, so it does happen. That may be down to it being a house share, but still. Currently writing this in the shadow of Windsor Castle while I walk to work. <laughs> nice. Okay, very, very well. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I don't know where I sit with the locks on bedroom thing. Oh, it's weird. It is weird, is it? It is weird. I mean, like, obviously, house share, absolutely, that makes sense. I mean, I think what we're learning here is that James considers his children, like, housemates, right? <laughs> Lodgers. Yeah. Roomies! Yeah. It's dangerous, yeah. isn't it, to have locks on the doors? Like, yeah, well, there's a fire roll. inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, uh, Capone, did, what are the rules in locks on bedroom doors in Canada? Do they have a policy on it? Hmm. No, if I was thinking about this, if I was to, you know, if I did have kids, I mean, can't you just put on like a, you know, those please don't disturb signs that you get on hotel I don't think they'll read them, mate. Would they? (laughs) Yeah, they wouldn't pay attention to that, I don't think. Okay. No. Yeah, that's why. It's a good idea, though. I I was going to say the next next message. Have you met any kids? (laughs) <laughs> yeah let's move to the next one uh, anonymous okay. re farley having a lock on his bedroom door growing up my childhood bedroom had a lock on the inside of the door i don't know why but it was there when we moved in and i don't think i ever used it except for one time during the summer holidays my then girlfriend now wife and i were in a long distance relationship and thought it would be a good idea to experiment with a bit of you know what over the phone it's going well and getting close to the big moment when my dad tries to open the door. <laughs> Not once, but twice, and then a third time. Panicking that he's about to come barging in and not thinking clearly, I let out a phrase that still haunts me to this day. There's a lock on the door for a reason! <laughs> Silence. Needless to say... I'm wanking! <laughs> I'm coming! Um, needless to say, it put everyone off their stroke and I wanted the ground to open up. Um, can't look at my dad the same... As he clearly knows I was wanking, and my di- my wife still teases me about it. Has this happened to you? Uh, no. no, it's not. No, it's not. No, I've never been caught. Thankfully, <laughs> I'm very discreet. Um, <laughs> Capone. 
You're on a podcast, mate. Yeah, you can't do that. On... Say, yeah, say no. Someone will complain if you do a video. Sorry, and stuff. Uh, Capone was nodding and he mouthed yeah. no, every sorry, day. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... You see, my, he said, I'm um, doing it right now. Because my childhood bedroom had a lock on the door and I used to just lock myself in when I was in a mood. Really? Oh, yeah. I was just if I was yeah. pissed off with well, mum and dad. I never, I, had, like, oh, fuck I never it. had a lock on my door. I did have the coolest. I've never seen these since. I had the coolest light switch as a kid. Oh, yeah. It was. It, that's a okay, thing that's to... your <laughs> feedback. <laughs> Shut up, Matt. <laughs> is this, is, this is... Dave? Is, is this how you seduce Joe? Yeah. Is this... <laughs> Look at my light switch, baby. <laughs> this is the nineties, right? This is yeah. the nineties. Mm -hmm. It was just a pad, and you touched it, mm. and the, the, it went up and down just by touching the pad. Jesus. It wasn't a switch at all. Worth more sure. than the house. In the 90s. <laughs> it wasn't a giant switch. What? Because you the whole thing wasn't color. a big switch. We went up and down. The whole up. wall? No. <laughs> it's just a little pad and you touched it. And if you if you lick your finger before you touch it, you got a little electric shock. So that's probably why they were only on the market for about a week. <laughs> my, yeah, that sounds dangerous to me. Probably how yeah. my dad got it because they were probably selling for cheap down the fucking market. <laughs> right, okay. You uh, missed my joke with... then. Sorry. Oh, Adam, Sorry, Adam, Adam, tell me about it, mate. This is what it's like. Go on. Uh, I I said, can you change the color? But of course you can't. You couldn't do that back then. No. But you can now with all lights. You know, like this one. Yes, yeah, right. Like the hue light. <laughs> Short just went. That's right. <laughs> right. Should we get to the news? Yes. Well, yeah. If you want to leave us feedback, go to tcgs.co slash dear tcgs. Uh, let's get to the news then. All right. Let's get to the news. Um. Konami have confirmed, so this is happening on Wednesday, so when this goes out, Wednesday the 19th of October, um, is it 10pm our time, I think, they are doing uh, a stream, which is going to be about the future of Silent Hill. Um, it's finally happening, all those rumours, pretty much weekly rumours, yeah, um, we've um, discussed one it's recently. it's mad that it's taken them this long, right? It's crazy that it's taken them this long. So off the back of the Silent Hills stuff, mm. you'd have thought the moment that wasn't happening, they'd be getting a team together. They'd to work, work on something on else. Silent well, you, I mean, you would yeah. think that, but then they've just completely fucked like Metal Gear Solid as well. Yeah, so, yeah, it's true. And they're very successful football games. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, you know, obviously this, this is like, a, I guess, a big deal in one sense because obviously it's a beloved series. However, it's been that long since we've had a good one. I can't really see why anyone would get excited for this. Oh, you can't see why people would get excited for it. What? Yeah. People loved them, didn't they? Back in the day, that's why they're excited. Yeah, back in I the know day. What Sean's saying the Fucking reality years ago. of it is not going to be the same thing. But, no. um, but I think, no, Silent Hills, um, I, you know, I think you've got the people that have played the original and still have fond memories of it. Uh, they'll be interested at the very least to see mm. what they, they come up with. But also, I think, honestly, I think PT opened the idea of Silent Hill up to a completely different audience. because Yeah, but again, not, we know it's not going to be that. because Of that's... course it's not. Of course it's not. But the, the name has been banded around. It's almost legend mm. at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And for there to be a Silent Hill game, I think if they nail the, the, the trailer, if they nail, nail the announcement, I think this could be... I think people could get excited for it. Um, mm. Whether it's going to be good or not is an entirely different matter. Well, this it's is it because obviously the rumors yeah. have persisted that Blueber team are going to be doing it, and mm. they've not made a great game for a while. And they, you know, the last one, um, the Medium, had a like genuinely really toxic theme to the story, um, so that was really disappointing. So, yeah, I would not be thrilled if it turned out it was them particularly, but. So yeah, okay. 10 yeah, p.m. on okay. Wednesday. Find out. Yeah, I haven't played one of these before because obviously it looked far too scary for me. But yeah. um, and you know, like with things recently, like you know, Resident Evil two and three remakes. You know, they were you know the old games, but brought up you know made much more modern, nice loads of quality of life improvements. Would they? Would this be like a remake of the first one? Because I know they've already remastered one or two or whatever before. I was going. I would have thought they would remake two before any of the others that's like the most famous of the series but I really, you, you would think they would remake that before remaking the first one possibly the, was yeah. the second one where it probably kicked off and yeah the second one's the the most revered the, one, the most beloved yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm looking at blue the team's uh history <clears throat> yep there's some poorly named games there amen <laughs> amen 
and then Amen 2. That was right. PlayStation Vita and PlayStation mm-hmm. 3. Double Bloob. This might be oh, controversial. That class, that Here we go. Oh, God. Oh, go on. But was Silent Hill really like a... Did it really have good gameplay? Well, or this is it. it. Just a... Well, you got to remember, <laughs> this was at the start of that 3D <coughs> era, wasn't it? You had, you know, yeah. games were still finding their feet in that 3D space, that, that you know, this new style of gameplay. Um, I mean, you go back to the original Resident Evil, it controls like shit. Mm. Um, yeah, like tank controls and that, yeah. But, you know, clearly there was something there because remakes and people still interested in that series. So. Mm. I mean, yeah, I, like, I trust certainly Capcom like... more than Konami. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, certainly when people talk fondly about Silent Hill 2, it's about the story and the themes and how it's actually like a sophisticated horror, you know, rather than like yeah. talking about the gameplay. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, well, I don't I, think they played that well. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, it's not a game series that I've got any interest in, but mm. I, you know, I'm fascinated to see what fans of the series are going to mm. uh, get from it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I can see them doing basically, you know, what Resident Evil seven and to a lesser extent Resident Evil Village did, you know, bring it, yeah much more up to date that you know much many face gorgeous and graphics but i guess way scarier than than resident evil I mean, again i haven't played this but that was my that was my assumption this was just a far scarier less action heavy mm. version of resident evil yeah yes yes so last Excited week to hear about it uh last week you know we were talking about voice actors and we talked about the fact that um helena taylor has who originally voiced bayonetta bayonetta one and two has been replaced um for the new for Bayonetta 3 um and you know we'd sort of said it was a shame but you know they'd said oh it was due to like um you know uh, like conflicting work schedules or something and we're like okay well as long as she's busy like who cares like you know good for her I guess um uh, she has posted a series of videos on Twitter um basically saying that the reason she declined to voice Bayonetta in Bayonetta 3 um, is because she was offered a grand total of four thousand dollars to do it, um, which is a you know a, a pretty insultingly low offer. Um, yeah, I mean she st- she opens by saying that these these games have made like what was it four hundred and fifty million she quoted or something. Yeah, yeah. When you, know, you yeah when you take into a account lot of profit merchandise yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and basically she is asking players to boycott Bayonetta three um you know in in light of the fact that you know she's been offered this then what does that say about you know the working practices and you know how, how staff are treated in general um it's i mean it, it, yeah it, it's worth watching all the videos yourself um i know like well dave like we've talked about this we're not entirely on board with some of the stuff she says um uh, i think i she... think the principle i i mean i i it's you know, you don't really want to focus on the negatives at all. Like I think, no. I think you know, the fact that she's come out and said this. I, I mean, some courage, right? Because oh, that, that, that puts her career on the line, right? Mm. You know, if yeah, she's openly sure. talking about how much she's offered to work on a project like that mm. with such a big company as well, um, I think, and such big, you know, developers, Platinum are not small fry. Mm. Um, uh, to come out against and speak out against it is a huge thing to do. Mm. Um, and it's very, very embarrassing for everyone involved that was touting the, the nonsense about how they couldn't get the schedule to work or whatever. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I wasn't really on board of what she said at the end towards the other actor that took up the role. Like, there's part of me. Yeah, she, so she said. She's talking she about said, Jennifer Hale, isn't she? And yeah, she, she's sort about of. Jennifer Hale. She sort of initially says, oh, you know, like, I love all actors and I, I wish her the best and everything, but then refers to it as a betrayal. Um, she says it betrayal. She said she's got no right to sign anything as Bayonetta. And yeah. she, I, I think that side of it, I kind of think, well, obviously, she's she's personally hurt by that, right? And yeah. I get I get that. I get, like, you you know, you are not Bayonetta, I am Bayonetta. I get that mm-hmm. response. Mm-hmm. Probably didn't need to be said in when the focus was on, on the publisher or whatever. Yeah, like, that, um, that stuff is, is sort of self-evident. Like, yeah, and, call, and calling it a betrayal, I think, is a bit harsh as well because you know we mm. don't know uh, what information was floating about when she took up that job, or mm. you know a response or whatever. But 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 without focusing on that, so you know it feels a bit harsh to turn around and say, you know, oh, what great thing to do to stand up and expose 
you know the realities mm. of what these actors are being paid they you know they're voicing your favorite characters right and mm. these things are making a hell of a lot of money and the actors behind them are not worthless you know mm. they they they're not, they're not um you know worth uh, you know a month's wages or whatever this is real uh, importance they 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 they're actors right mm. Mm. um so i think that's important to focus on that point but yeah, there was by the end of it, I was like, kind of like, oh man, just focus on that. But who mm. am I? You know, it's not really my mm. place to say, is it? But yeah, I mean, and you know, for context, like obviously, so th- this has started a whole conversation, and like you know, the people were um, tweeting to you know, like sound designers were saying like, oh, just so you know, like I would get paid double just to edit this, never mind record it in the first place. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, and the um, so the SAG AFTRA union. Um, so their standard rate is thousand dollars a day, and, that, and a day is four hours due to the strain it puts on your voice. No one expects you to do an eight-hour day as a voice actor. So when you consider it's the main character in a triple A game, and the, the, so they revealed in the trailer as well, didn't they? That there's actually there's like loads of bayonetters in this. Um, now, granted, okay. they they could have been voiced by other people. I don't know. Um, so maybe maybe that sort of split it up a bit. Um, but I would have assumed, yeah, more than four days would have been required of her. And especially just to honor the fact that she's the one who created that voice, right? Um, it's just, yeah, it's really gross. And, you know, and she mentions that she wrote to Hideki Kamiya, um, and he came back saying, yeah, you know, like you're absolutely brilliant. Like, it would be such a shame for the fans if you weren't able to do it. And that is when he offered her the $4,000. So actually, the Did previous he, yeah, offer was even did, lower. Yeah. Did he offer it? Because I'd be surprised if he was doing that. Would you? Um, well, if you, he's I, the you producer, thinking... he's got the oversight on budgets and stuff, I right? So, I guess to so, an yeah. extent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, yeah. so then this all caused further fallout on on Twitter, didn't it? Well, yeah. So you know, Hideki Kamir then tweeted, "Oh, what was I can't remember the actual phrasing, but basically, like, oh, it's a shame that people have to tell lies." Um, but then he added, "Like, beware my rules." <laughs> Because he's, you know, because he's such a cool maverick on Twitter. He has these these it's rules funny, that you have to it? adhere he's to. This, he's got this um, style on Twitter, which is mm. like, you go against me, you're getting blocked. Fuck mm-hmm. you! And mm-hmm. then he retweets and says, "Blocked." You know, yeah. he he's got this style which is very uh, it's funny, and people buy mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, this is, you know, you you're having a pop at him, you get blocked. That's his style. That's what he does. But when he's talking about a serious subject like this, yeah. it don't really work, mate. You know what I mean? Drop yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit. Suddenly and... just makes you look like a total arsehole. <laughs> yeah, it really does, doesn't yeah. it? And then he, am I right? He deleted his account? Is that? Yes. Yeah, deactivated it, yeah. yeah. He's, he's back now, but... Yeah. Oh, he? oh, he's back now. Yeah. Okay. And like um, Jennifer Hale today has put out a statement, like a yeah. short thing on Twitter, saying, with regard to Bayonetta 3, as a long-time member of the voice acting community, I support every actor's right to be paid well, and I've advocated consistently for this uh, for years. Anyone who knows me or has followed my career will know that I have great respect for my peers and I'm an advocate for all members of the community. I'm under an NDA and a lot, not a liberty to speak regarding the situation. My reputation speaks for itself. I sincerely ask everyone keep in mind that this game has been created by an entire team of hardworking, dedicated people and I hope everyone will have an open mind about what they've created. Finally, I hope that everyone involved uh, may resolve the differences in an amicable and respectful way. With love and respect to all, Jennifer Hale. I don't know how you do resolve in an am- amicable and respectful way. Yeah, it's sort of too Because I might have passed that. Because they can come back and say, or oh, how about 10 grand? But that's like more of an insult. Like, why didn't well, you give also, me that Also, the game's before? out next week. So it's yeah, not so... like gonna, do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? It's not like yeah. they're going to do it. So... It's a bit late now. Yeah, no, it is a bit late now. It's, mm. I think it's a really sad situation. And, you know, it would have been nicer if, if, if the two actors seem to be coming together on it. But there's mm. obviously some, some career decisions that are going on there that... And, some struggles uh probably internally between themselves it's mm. it's really sad it's a really shitty news story and it really sort of bums you it's one of those things yeah. where it's kind of like not everyone's gonna be like this in fact the vast majority of the people will just completely ignore all this and plow on and play the game and enjoy it right mm-hmm. um regardless but there is part of me that's kind of like I'm sort of thinking about picking this up and now i just it, yeah, i'm not i'm not Sorry, yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm not sitting there saying boycott it. Oh, I'm definitely boycotting it because it's not that. Mm. Um, I'm sitting there thinking, ah, oh, just puts a little bit of a just feels sour a bit gross. feeling over it all. Yep. And, yep. Yeah, does feel a bit grubby. Um, and yeah, I wasn't going to pick it up anyway, but now it's even less, even less. So, but it's out next week, you say? 
Was it 20, uh, 28, 28th of soon, October? It's it? out, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's soon. End yeah. of the month. Um, it's not far. And it's, yeah, and it's coming to that time of year where it's like, I've got Christmas to pay for. Like, any excuse to not have to buy a game. <laughs> Spend like, money. Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and yeah, and as you say, it, it's harsh because Jennifer Hale is like a, you know, a renowned, beloved uh, voice actor. Um, and it sounds like she had no idea what was going on um with the original voice actor um so she's probably not thrilled about being landed in this situation but again she's under nda so she's gonna be yeah and to I, I mean say, i can so. only assume she was getting like a ton of shit on and and that's mm. kind of why well, my yeah. point about that last thing about it being a betrayal and stuff i thought all you're gonna do is send people on twitter to go and yeah, yeah. you know that you know the result of saying something like that yeah it would be worth it but mm. you know yeah yeah, so yeah. it's a sad story all round, really, and uh, it, no one. Well, I say no one comes out of it well. Um, you know, uh, Helena Helena Taylor, I think, comes out of it quite well to having the courage mm. to stand up to mm. uh, to these things. But but everyone else, yeah, it kind of bums me out reading this stuff. Mm. But it's important to read it, you know. It's yeah, 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 story. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, there have been well, there's been a new patch for Elden Ring. And, oh yeah, and the uh, I made it easier. Have I? I fucking the, uh, yeah, put easy mode. Yeah. Difficult yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the boffins down at the lab have been having a look yeah. at it, and they spotted a few things. Our uh, lab sounds like we've got a lab. <laughs> <laughs> we have run by Doctor Farley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's where, why that's actually got, where he is this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, uh, so yeah, basically, people have spotted references to a uh, ray tracing. Um, so it's not in oh the my. game yet. I think people have managed to like force it, like force enable it by sort of hacking the game. But so it looks like ray tracing support is being added. I don't know if that's for consoles. I would imagine not because it's performance wise. It's not perfect on consoles to begin it's with, is it? It's bad though, is it? It's pretty... It's, it's, it's never bothered me. Like... like the the frame rate dips a fair bit on the Series S. Um, but not, I don't know, it's never... Yeah, but we're talking next gen consoles. Um... <laughs> I, uh, I don't. I uh, yeah, it's weird. It's strange how the only real experience I've had with ray tracing is on the PlayStation, mm. and on the games. Yeah, the the only the Sony games that really support it, mm. like in any any meaningful way. I um, and I was absolutely blown away with how um the Spider Man games use uses that. Mm. Um, absolutely blown away. It looks stunning. So, you know. I just don't think, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think this is coming to console. This no. is for PC players, isn't it? And even so, I don't know, like, I know I know ray tracing isn't just reflections, but that is where it does its best work. Shadows. Right? <laughs> no, it is. It's glass. When you see, like, glass and marble and shit, yeah. that's when you go, whoa, holy shit. Okay. Well, and, you know, like water, puddles, etc. I mean, that, that's the way you see a lot of that. That's true. Yeah. Um, water, glasses, of, and... Uh, Concrete. Any any other yeah concrete yeah concrete famously, famously I never forget I never forget the um she said uh, marble I said that one I think did it oh, um sorry. yeah I did oh, uh, I, <laughs> I never forget when they added it to what is it, it was ray tracing in that Watch Dogs Legion and it just meant oh, yeah. that every time it rained there was no point in playing the game because it was <laughs> really? just blinding you yeah like the, the sun was just beaming <laughs> off of the floor and directly into your hand uh, Tony you are you a fan of uh, ray tracing did you just oh. say sellotape? Yeah, because it was a shiny. <laughs> <see the> <laughs> I was just oh, saying, I was just thinking of shiny <clears throat> things. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm a big fan of ray tracing here, ambient occlusion. Love it. <laughs> okay. Hello. All right. uh, the, <laughs> the other thing <laughs> yep. uh, um, people have found. So, so glad to have you on. Uh, <laughs> uh, people have found references to uh, new maps as well. Um, they're just like vague names, so they're called like M20 and M45. No, that's uh, just that's just the fucking A to Z. That's just <laughs> the A to Z they found. It's not. I've been on the M20. Yeah, speeding it's, up. It's... this new fast travel system where you can just you get on a big road and you just fucking run. Um, again, your yeah, horse. They're, they're basically doing a death stranding thing, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build the road. Yeah, yeah. Just build motorways. Um, so you can start the game and then just straight to the yeah. land of the giant. <laughs> Kayla to Stormvale, done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two minutes. Um... Going down to Margate on the M2. <laughs> Stopping off at Ashford to get some cheap 
polo shirts. Can I can I just say I'm so sorry to a everyone listening and b Capone editing this because I've still got quite a bad cough, and unfortunately people keep saying funny things, and it's setting me off. What do you hope that? Um, so we'll so, try and be less funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. I'll be less funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it sounds like uh, there's so, you know some new areas are getting added. Whether that's uh, you know just some dungeons or something more significant, no idea. Um, but it does suggest there could be some DLC at some point. Which just on the one hand, look go on. at the places along the M20. Oh yeah. So we could be going to in Elden Ring. We could be going to Maidstone, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could be going to. Uh, <laughs> Lenham, Lenham, Sandway, Platts right. Heath, mm-hmm. Yately, Egerton, Little Winnersh, Little Chart, Ram Lane. Yeah, That's we could I be going like. to Westwell Leacon. <laughs> <laughs> There's all these places. There's all these places with Witchling. So look forward to that coming up Witchling does actually sound like a place in Elden Ring there, it does fair, yeah it? to be fair that, that would work that would um, yeah it's weird because on the one hand obviously it sold millions so they'd be daft not to put paid DLC in but also like is the game not big enough <laughs> do you know what I mean like the <laughs> idea of adding more to it it just seems insane would it be but... wicked if they just like, you get in one of the huts you know the little huts in Elden Ring mm. and then like all of a sudden these boosters come from underneath it and then you go into space <laughs> just lift there's off. a whole level in space <laughs> it'd be like Mario Galaxy where you're where you're on these little <laughs> these little planets running around fighting one of these big bosses <laughs> how good would that be that would get be really it good. done get it done come on Next from software story. pull your finger out um, another sad one um, G4 is being shut down less than a year after it was rebooted um, this is the the TV channel um uh, yeah, they just said, uh, as you know, G4 was reintroduced last year to tap into the popularity of gaming. Uh, we invested to create the new G4 as an online and TV destination for fans to be entertained, be inspired and connect with gaming content. Over the past several months, we worked hard to generate that interest in G4, but viewership is low and the network has not achieved sustainable financial results. This is certainly not what we hoped for, and as a result, we've made the very difficult decision to discontinue G4's operations effective immediately. I mean, it's, it's just—it's another is one. Why Capone laughing? Sorry, there's a, <laughs> there's an elephant in the room. Why are you laughing at this news story, Capone? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I hate to admit it, but I've just got no idea what G4 is. <laughs> I, I must admit, I thought it was like some sort of group. Well, this like is—I mean, this is. Group. <laughs> it's a weird one, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, this does happen sometimes when something shuts down and we're all like, mm, I didn't really. Didn't <laughs> do, you reckon, do you reckon but, we're going to get some scope when we shut down? Do you reckon it's going to be reported in some podcast? But why, what is it? Like, how, is it what is like, TV? Um, this is the thing. It's a, it's, day, like, obviously, it's an American TV channel, right? Yeah. Which is right. presumably why none of us have really come across it. Um, but it's just, it, it interests me more in that it's, it's just another one where, like, like people found like people who work there found out on twitter um yeah that sucks so one of their hosts uh gerard the completionist um found out from a wario 64 tweet like <laughs> it's just fucking ridiculous it is ridiculous um happens more than you think though especially yeah. in public facing mm. um jobs there's a uh, i know a few people in a few industries that say they found out major news about their work mm. on twitter mm. Um, I guess because they don't want it leaking out. Exactly. Yeah. If you yeah. tell your staff and then it leaks out and then it's broken on a website, mm. that seemed bad for the company. Mm. Um, so I guess that's why they do it that way. But yeah, 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 yeah. it's not so good for the staff. Um, yeah. No, seriously though, what? Where would we get reported when we quit? When we stop, where would it be reported? Because like, legitimately, Kane and Rince, I think they'd do a thing about us if they're still going. Probably wouldn't. All right, gamer. Shut down by then. You're a gamer, no, I can't see you're a gamer picking no. up that new stuff. We're not quite there yet. Maybe I by think... the time we give up, we'll be bigger than you're a gamer. I'm thinking like a seven-page special in the Mirror or the Guardian, <laughs> and maybe the, it'd be the front of the guide on the Saturday, and it'd be like you know, black and white picture of us all. What if, black, what black if I go around pitching an article about the show? I'll write it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Edge, get it in Edge. I'll get it in Edge. Get it in Edge. Come Did on, shilling. Remember... In Ma- when Joypod finished, you got a article. I think it was in Metro magazine. Yeah, or Metro, Metro newspaper. Yeah, the newspaper. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it was a reader's feature, though, wasn't it? Yeah, front yeah, page. It was a reader's feature, yeah. yeah. It, was, it wasn't It was legitimately written by uh, by anyone at the Metro, but someone sent in like a long letter about us, and it was published on there. Mm. That was pretty cool. Mm. Um, but no, we're bigger now. We're bigger than Joypod was. So um, we officially? should be... Yeah. I don't know officially yet. Uh, uh, we don't... No, officially. I don't know officially, <laughs> Matt. I know that's what you've what? always wanted, but we <clears> don't know our <throat> listener figures when we were at Play Radio. They were quite big. 10, we were, 12. We were top of the pod charts for like a month. It was there weren't crazy. as many podcasts then, though. Yeah, there's like seven back then. Yeah, but isn't that better? Because that means that the listener figures were bigger for each podcast. No, because <laughs> I meant the audience. <laughs> you I mean, eating against girls, 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 or something like that. What was it? Uh, it was girls. Yeah, there was a, there was a radio show on Play Radio called Girls, 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 uh, which was... Uh, yeah, free free women talk about women things, and they were destroying you in the charts, weren't they? So. Yeah, I think that, I can imagine that. The weirdest, the weirdest battle we've had in the podcast charts is when we did Big Bother and we were battling it out with the Dad's Army podcast. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Do you remember that? Yeah, I never forget that. Those and, wankers um, and the other Big Brother podcast, the Daily Record, Daily the Record Scottish yep. newspaper, yeah. which Adam <laughs> phoned up. And uh, they had, a, had an argument with one of the presenters of that podcast. You've I don't heard remember that, right, this. I haven't yeah, she called it. Adam. It's one of my favourite memories ever. Of course you do. <laughs> when you phone up, you went <clears throat> phone up, and he said we had thousands of listeners, and you went, "Oh, but why would you quit if you only had two bad reviews on iTunes? That is, if you did have thousands of listeners and not four." <laughs> and he said, yeah. "Well, you've accused us of lying, there. Yeah? <laughs> you know, lying." You don't remember this. So, you, so I recorded it and then put it Yeah, it, it was show. on the show. It was on the oh, podcast, yeah. I've, I've got the now. recording. I've got the recording. Yeah, and he, he starts getting really angry. I, I don't want you. to listen to it. He, say, he said to you, he said to you, I'm not, not that interested in talking to you, to be honest. <laughs> and you went, oh, okay. <laughs> you don't remember this. This is no. mad. Okay. Anyway, yeah, G4. I only yeah, know G4. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear about that. <laughs> I even know G4 because, yeah, a bunch of people I follow were, you know, <laughs> either on it or they were friends of people on it. And um, so if we're like, oh, G4 coming back was a big thing, not because I watched it when I was younger, but because a lot of people I followed mm. or follow in America, they're like, oh, G4's back. And yeah, like friends of friends are working there. So um, this is obviously incredibly sad. Like they had like layoffs only like, what's it, a week or a week, week, or, a week or two gone. So uh, not okay. a huge surprise, but yeah, like, less than a year. It's um, yeah. yeah, no, it's like, sad. Yeah, because you would think if you're going to embark on anything like this, like one full year to assess and then maybe try and change things. I don't know. I just find the idea of giving something less than a year just seems insane to me. But You win, you yeah. win, uh, you win to say 10 million on the lottery, Sean. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you pay for TCGS for a year? When, you say, you, pay, say, when you say pay for it, we're like, right, let's get an office. Wages, let's... wages for the four of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All equipment, yeah. all that. Let's really give it a push for a year. Do you do that? I mean, it'd be fucking brilliant, wouldn't it? But again, it'd have to be more than a year. I think about this all the time. Yeah. I think about this all the time. And, and, and like, if it gets to the point, I say 10 million because mm. I think after spending like a million on us, you'd go, oh, I've got mm. rain in now, and I? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've, got yeah. New, uh, I've, I've, I've got to just, oh, I know we've won 10, but actually we've won nine. What do you mean? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. When's, when's, when's already. One's I agreed, for personal projects. I've agreed to losing one. Not losing, <laughs> best. If one. I ever won that money and I had to break the news to you that that you know it's shutting down because I don't want to fund it anymore, mm. I will just tweet it from the account. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be telling you about that. Please, <laughs> but you should also do it during a show recording. Yeah. Oh I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? I'll get James to read it in the news. <laughs> yeah, like here's um not the fancy zone. Here's we're gonna end on a big one. <laughs> TCGS update. TCGS it's yeah. over. Uh, it's is officially <laughs> over, and then we'll check Eurogamer and see if they've reported on it. Yeah. Um, Nothing. Okay. Read your silence. Next. So last week was Meta's Connect event, um, which I mean we could have talked about on the show. Where there was nothing initially mind blowing about it. Obviously, they revealed the Quest Pro, which is one and a half thousand dollars grand. Um, but yeah, there's been... it looks fucking nice that thing though, doesn't it? Does eh? look nice. Does oh look yeah, nice. proper little set of glasses there, isn't it? Um, yeah, good bit, little pair of, pair of goggles. 
Not well enough, grand pair of goggles. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so the Wall Street Journal um, claims to have internal documents that basically detail that Meta is like terrified about how badly Horizon Worlds is doing. Um, so this is their, their, their sort of big uh, stab at the Metaverse. This is the one where it's like, you can just go in and hang out with your friends and watch it's PlayStation Home, right? But in VR, um, which, you know, I'm being sort of facetious, but also not. Um, it says they'd initially hoped to build a community of 500,000 monthly active users by the end of 2022, uh, and has now reportedly revised this down to 280,000, uh, with the current count standing at less than 200,000. I mean, I don't really know how you're going to add to that now, given that you've put the price up of the headset. Um, and I don't know. Um, and yeah, basically they reported that uh, most Horizon users do not return after the first month, and most of its worlds are, quote, mostly barren of users. Um, it's just like, like, I, I don't, you know, this isn't the sort of thing that interests me about VR particularly, um, but like, the fact that like, you know, apparently they, they've said like, oh, we're going to add like YouTube support so you can watch YouTube stuff with your friends. It's like, yeah. I can do that already on a fucking <laughs> free snooker game where there's a telly in the bar and you can put you yeah, like, yeah, yeah. come on. Like it's, <laughs> it's um, weird, isn't it? Because they've got this vision that this is going to be the future, but they've, it seems like they've got no ideas for it being the future. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's doing stuff that we've seen before, but in VR. Um, people... Oh, sorry. No, go on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like people don't really want to go into a space that is dedicated, you know, just dedicated to meeting or interacting. Mm. They want to interact whilst doing something fun, be it something like Fortnite or Fall Guys. Mm. There's got to be a fun activity. At absolutely, the heart absolutely. Of it. And, and this is it, isn't it? I mean, here's here's I think the fundamental thing that they're missing out on here, or they're, or they're not quite grasping. They want everyone to be together in this space, right? And they want it to be a social space and for it to be the way that we communicate going forward, right? Mm. But what they don't seem to understand is that I can do that at the moment. I can yeah. do that on the phone. I can do <laughs> that on Skype. I can do that, you know, on Zoom. Mm. But we don't because we don't want to be in touch with everyone for long periods of time all the fucking time. Mm. And, and we as gamers, we're okay doing that. We as gamers... Capital G. Damn when playing, straight. When we're playing a game together. Yeah. And, you know, me and my mates are not sitting there really talking about each other's lives when we're playing a game. We're, mm. we're slagging each other off on FIFA or whatever. It's it's weird, isn't it? A, 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 a social space, but I don't see what it offers over a phone call yeah. um, to, repl to become this new phenomenon yeah. which is what they need you know mm. they want it to be the new facebook like everyone's on facebook everyone's posting shit on facebook all day long blah 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 blah, blah. but that's they're not phoning each other all day long you know there's a yeah. difference um so yeah i i don't know as it, and that's why that's why the games that i put the most time into on vr are say poker stars vr where i'm sat down i'm not walking around the place i'm having a friendly chat with my mate mucking about there's things to do we're playing a game together and it feels quite sociable and that's quite good what i don't want to do is like walk around my flat where i might bump into something pretending to throw basketballs like <laughs> uh, it's not the sort of thing that i see me wanting to spend time on you mm. know and this is it and like you know they've said like the, the plan is to add like activities and, and games and stuff it's like yeah, yeah but they're all gonna be worse than yeah. the games that we already yeah. have Totally. It's like, oh, if you add, you've added mini golf, have you? Well, it's not going to be as good as walk about mini golf, is it? No. You know, so that's it. Like... So that's what they need to do. They need to somehow incorporate those games into their social space. Yeah. They know that instead of, oh, let's do a mini golf bit in this. Mm. No, make there be a library of games that I can bring my friends to and say, right, we're all playing this because there is a problem with the quest. Let's not get this wrong. Mm. There is a, a problem with the quest about getting into a party together mm. uh, pre-games, right? Yeah. There's always that, okay, I'll ring you, then you, well, uh, there's the problem. And they put barriers in the way with all this account stuff, right? Yeah. So at the moment, it's we, clunky as fuck. We tend to, like, if we're playing Walkabout Mini Golf, like, <clears throat> if the people I normally play with, like, we will arrange it all on WhatsApp first because it's too yeah. much of a headache to try totally. and do it on the fly. Like, 
The yeah. irony being it's their system as well, WhatsApp. So it's not well, like, yeah, uh, you know. True. Um, but, but, but that's not what they're going for, is it? They want it all in. But yeah, yeah. no, we're the same. And then we, we all hope that we all show up in the lobby or whatever. Yeah. There's no, you know. Um, yeah. uh, but I don't know. It's there's, there's work to do. And, you know, even when you were using the desktop version, weren't you, for when we played PokerStars? And uh, we were all using just the, the Quest. And so that you couldn't join the party chat, Sean. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, it, it, which should work. Like the yeah. it, like when you were calling me, it was like showing up. But then as I was clicking on it, it wasn't, wasn't having it. So that's, um, that's what they need to focus on. Making yeah. that part of the experience mm -hmm. really, you know, what the, it should be. Not a separate app where you're trying to imitate the, s the stuff that games already offer. It's weird, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's weird. Um, seem to be having said <laughs> having said all this can we do a horizon world stream i would be it would be funny yeah we're doing it yeah, we're sure. i would like we're to see we what the that. deal is we can triple the monthly active users in some <laughs> <of those. coughs> That's good. Um, so as a, a follow-up to that um so john carmack um did a, a talk at meta connect um so he uh when it was you know back in the oculus days he was chief uh, chief technology officer and he's now just an advisor um but he just said loads of negative stuff <laughs> he said quote there's a bunch that i'm grumpy about um he's first he was saying like he, he was gutted that he was doing this virtually right um he was he was hoping to do like a you know an actual physical keynote presentation but um yeah so you know me being an avatar on screen on a video for you is basically the same thing as being on a video which is already like like yeah absolutely an already like sort of problem, damning yeah. of yeah, yeah exactly um and yeah and he he expressed uh frustration with the direction of their avatar design um saying so you know when that that picture of mark zuckerberg's avatar uh, a few months back um he looked like a weird smooth baby man um <laughs> They, they've Which is sort quite of, realistic, isn't it? Well, yeah, to be fair, it's pretty accurate. Um, but they, yeah, so since that, uh, Meta have gone like, no, we need to make it look like super fucking realistic. It's like, no, that's not, that's not really the way forward. Like when you can look at like the popularity of something like VR chat, which is just full of like, you know, like anime people and furries yeah. and stuff and everyone fucking loves it. Um, like it, it, you know, it's another thing that makes like the actual sort of meta metaverse stuff seem really tame in comparison. Um, uh, yeah, so Carmack also doesn't like the fact that the Quest Pro headset is uh, grand and a half. So he's always advocated for accessible technology. Quote, and the Quest Pro is definitely not that. Um, and he also criticised. That's about... okay. Though. I don't. I, I don't get that criticism. Yeah, they've still got the cheaper headset, right? They so have. Not, that's not going away. And it's yeah, I think like it's easy for people to assume that the Quest Pro is like that's the next one, isn't it? Whereas the Quest Three is still a thing, right, Matt? I think rumored. <laughs> right, rumored. Right, Matt. 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 possibly <laughs> comment. Rumored, yeah. Okay, right. uh, fine, fine, fine. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that's going to be the the next <laughs> sort of consumer that's, one. Like I think that's the... currently nodding and winking <laughs> at the camera, and then we've. Oh, he's actually, oh, there he's got one. He's got one. He's yeah. just pulled. Oh, I just put. He's put it away. He's put it away. Uh, it's, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the quest. I think the idea is there's going to be a Quest Three that will be the next consumer one. Whereas the the Quest Pro, the clue is in the name. It's supposed to be for professionals and and businesses. Um, but yeah, and but yeah, uh, Carmack also slagged off the Quest Two a bit, uh, saying the basic usability uh, of it needs to get better. Uh, app startup times are slow transitions are glitchy um, we need to make it a whole yeah, lot but... better much much faster to get into he's not wrong yeah. he's not wrong but it's not bad though it, like whenever I I mean I've got a quest one mm -hmm. and whenever I load it up I don't think oh my god <coughs> I mean never... James does <laughs> yeah but James is broken he's, he's got exactly the same situation as what he had with his Xbox you know oh yeah he's yeah he's insisting broken. it's the hard way yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so boy, it's so bad loading this up. Mm. James, I've been in the game waiting for you. I've got the same headset. There's <laughs> so something wrong with yours. And every time he plays, oh, I need to reformat this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, James. <laughs> try uh, try maybe, doing that now, maybe, James. Maybe do it. Um, so, yeah, I, was, I thought that was interesting that John Carmack got to do a talk at uh, the Meta Connect 2022 showcase and this was just sort of slagged them off. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's not happy, is he? No. 
Not a happy bunny. Um, right, okay, is that it? That is it news? for the news. And I suppose it's time for what you've been playing. Competition. A big one? <laughs> competition time. Have you got a comp? Okay. Yeah, got, yeah. Oh, competition time. Oh, amazing. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to play. <laughs> this is news to me. Okay, right, we're going to You're going to You're do what? So I'm going to play a audio clip and the first person who is able to tell me. Are you playing this clip on Twitch? Yeah, can we hear this or is this for Yeah, I'm just thinking are... that's what's making me laugh is because I'm thinking. So you're going to do this on a podcast where people would now. have already have guessed it live. <laughs> so what's the point in the people listening to this on the podcast? Like, if, if anyone's in the room now, just switch off. Okay, so... Okay. We'll... Everyone on Twitch, switch off. Right, okay, so we're saying this isn't for people on Twitch, this. This isn't for people. This is people for the podcast, okay? I think it's this is so difficult that I'll include those. Okay, fine, well. but those of you who are on Twitch, set a reminder for when the podcast goes live and then just take the answer then straight yeah, away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> get ready to schedule your tweets. <laughs> So I'm going to play an audio clip. The first person who is able to tell me the source of this audio clip will win a £25 voucher from Amazon. Okay. Cool. How, good, no. how good does that sound? That's a pretty good price. That sounds Please great. Make it clear that the people that are in the chat now cannot cannot take part. <laughs> this is for podcast listeners. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how it's going to work. Don't okay, cheat. Okay. Okay, <coughs> okay Capone. Be ready for the clip. Yes. Oh, be I ready think... for it, everyone. It's true. I just want to get on a renal and some drugs. <laughs> so that's the clip. I'll play it again just for those that didn't. Mm. Okay. It's true. Yep. I just want to get on a renal and some drugs. You can hear that, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. we can hear it loud and clear. So the first person to give me the correct source of where that clip came from will win. All you need to do is at TGCS. <laughs> T- <laughs> TCGS. That's not Close. it either. The computer game show. No. TCG. Come on. What's our Twitter handle? TCGS. <laughs> I wish it was. What is it? It's have a guess. Have one more go. Uh, let me have one go. Go on. T C G S. No. Oh. T C G. Can we put him out of his misery? It's not the order that's the yeah. problem. There's something else missing. Why are oh, you helping him? Underscore. Because this is going to go on forever, Dave. Yeah, that's the beauty yeah. thing. <laughs> This is what you do to Capone, and that's where the gold comes from. Uh, <laughs> just, just, just say it. What TCGS it? Co. TCGS Co. Okay? I, I forgot about that. I've never noticed that. You've never so, noticed that? No. I mean, we reference it on the show all the time. Yeah, I kind of zone out. So, <laughs> at TCGS Co. That's yeah. right. With hashtag T... Okay. T-C-G-S. <laughs> Audio clip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hashtag. Help, help me out here, man. The hashtag is <laughs> watch the hashtag. Audio clip. Yeah. No wait, is it hashtag audio clip or hashtag TCGS audio clip? No, the at is the TCGS. Co. Oh my god! Okay, well, right, at TCGS Co. and hashtag is audio clip. Audio clip. Does that work? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, think we'll it might have to be more specific we... because <laughs> others might be using that hashtag. So let let me you, know, can, you can tweet this out. It will make. When you say better. source, do you just mean the platform that it was on, or do you mean an episode, or do you mean what? what I mean, it, it could be podcast it could be a stream it could be a bonus show it could be a talks over yeah it could be like any just of say so just say what source it is look the person who gives, <laughs> the person who gives me the closest source detail okay yeah <laughs> okay. 
this is gonna go wrong isn't it? it really is you haven't thought this through have you <laughs> this no. is like the tournoi i like this no <laughs> this is why i've done any competitions but yeah tweet at tcgs code with a hashtag tcgs audio clip with no, the source no no the hashtag is just audio clip Max. no because others will be doing hashtag audio clip that's a good point tcgs audio clip hashtag that's okay. the one Okay. Just look Thanks, for the tweet for correct details. Okay, right. Okay, That's so uh, yeah. you could win twenty-five pound voucher for Amazon. Yes. Cool. <laughs> God, I don't like. Exciting. This is nervous. I'm made to make me real nervous. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> if Graham Hunter wins, then we know something's <laughs> up. We know that this is a tax thing. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, should we go? Money. Is that it? Is there anything else you want to say? No, That's it. Okay, well, let's start with our guests, Capone. What have you been playing this week? Well, this week, the past two years, what have you yeah. been playing? What have you got for us? So many games out. Oh, I didn't put anything in the notes. I said nothing because I've not played anything lately. But in the two years, I, I don't know. Let's just mix it into what Matt was going to mention. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what I was going to mention, Did but you... I want to hear what you've been playing, there Adam. Is one game, there is one game that I'd like to know your opinion on. Okay. Did you play Death Stranding? Yeah. Or did you think, well, all right, there's no need for the so, so I'm just a massive uh, Kojima mark. Right, okay, okay. So what, what did you think of that? I uh, loved it. Uh, it's such an underestimated game. It's, really? Yeah. I, it, it's sad how underlooked that game is, but it was definitely ahead of its time. <laughs> right. That's two things you've said now that are ahead of its time. Uh -oh. You can't just use that as a criticism for everything you all you consume. You know that, right? No. Okay. Um, Matt, you've been playing Elden Ring. Oh, I've been so heavily into Elden Ring. It's been ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I've put like 20, 23 or 25 hours into it since this Wednesday. Oh, wow. This is not good. Yeah. This is not good, mate. <laughs> since well, why Wednesday? is this not good? So, well, yeah, because we record on Tuesday. Why and I, can't like, you ever do anything in moderation? Why can't it just be? This is who I am, David. It's all or nothing. You know how it's I really record well, it in my life. It's, <laughs> it's not nothing, good. Trust me, it's not good. nothing in another area of your life. Hey, Matt. Yo, are you, Adam. Are you doing uh, summons with other players? I have done, yeah. Uh, that's the thing. I did it all on my own. And everyone else seems to just use Some weird summons. Yeah, I was, I've, I've summoned loads. Wow. It's great. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I'll Gee. try. Here's the thing. Um, here's here's the thing. I think Matt wanted to come onto the show this week and say that he'd completed it, right, Sean? Mm -hmm. uh, right. I've got a feeling that Matt wanted to, the aim was to get it done. No, no way, no way. I'm I'm so far away. I'm miles really? away. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I, there's I, it wasn't that. I just want to get it done before the end of the year. That's what I want. Um, so yeah, that that's why. I, and also, I just. I haven't wanted to stop playing it. It's not about like I want. Well, I want to get done, but also just every waking minute I want to be playing this game. God, when, um, when you're into that game, it's so good, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's so bloody good. And um, you know, I enjoyed it when I played it earlier in the year. Stopped for some games, came back, stopped, come back, and now you know, James has a recent completion. I'm like, okay, I want to get this done, and I'm so glad to have you. I've done like 23 or so hours since you know in, in last week. Um, I've got like a, you know, I'm, I've killed a bunch of bosses. I've travelled all over the map, and I've done as a quest. It's like even like the side quests. Uh, I thought oh, I probably wouldn't be bothering them, but you know, I did like Selens and um, I, I did uh, I, I did I like Rannies. I did like a bunch, and they're, they're all just like fun to do, fun to explore. You see so much on the map. It's really great to like just see these storylines progressing from wherever you are. Um, across the whole game, and yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. I've got yeah, I've got a weapon I love now. I've got like um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Elian, uh, Elinara's pole blade. Got up to a plus oh, nine. Good. It's just, it's a fucking great weapon. I've got a mimic tier finally after James was saying how good it is that's plus ten. I've got Radan's armor set after killing him, and um, yeah, I, it's all I want to do. I mean, I've played so much. We've had this question a million times about, you know, when you play a game so much, you start seeing it in the world. And I've, I've done that where I've like, swear I've seen, you know, you know, the blue marker you can put on the map and the blue marker goes, goes up into the sky. I feel like mm. I've seen that. I feel like I saw like a stone <laughs> over there. I was like, oh, it's like a somber smithing stone. Um, or, you know, saw like a statue where it looks like the summon statue. I've just got, I just, you know, I close my eyes and that's all I can see in here. Um, and uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm I don't loving think it. that's healthy, mate. Uh, probably isn't. <laughs> but, um, You're supposed to be seeing bits of a game everywhere. 
Well, yeah. So on, I, I mean, on Saturday, I think it's Saturday and no Friday and Saturday, I was up till playing like till half past three in the morning. It's ricky ridiculous. But um, yeah, have you been great. following the guides and everything? Getting, yeah, you know, yeah. And and I think the question last week was, you know, what other games have benefited with a guide like Elden Ring? And I'm not sure any have. Like that, that's half the fun is kind of following the guide. And and I think I spoke about this when I first played it in March or earlier in the year. You know, it feels like you're on a like you know a tour guide or reading like a rough guides kind of book yeah, or it's funny. It's i think even so... more so than the souls games that i've played because i think with the previous souls game, well the, the, the ones that i did play dark souls one three and and um bloodborne it felt like you know you still needed guides here and there you still needed a lot of advice especially you know the first what whatever your first one is you need a bit of advice there but i feel that because it is a little bit more linear there is it is more about going from hub to hub rather than it being a massive open world i think more this more than any other game in that series you needed as something with you you know to guide mm. you through to point you in the right direction and you know there's always going to be those people that prefer working it all out from scratch and experimenting with builds and this that and the other but I'm more than willing to just pick like stand on the shoulder of giants to yeah mm. i guess you know i'd streamed yeah, uh, Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Sekiro, and there I had the benefit of the chat helping me out. So, didn't didn't need a guide because you know for sun, Sunday nights or whatever it was, you know I had the, the chat helping me out. But yeah, this is it's just been great, and I think I was one of the people who wrote in last week saying you know like the when they look up how to do something or go to a certain place, that's like a mini quest. Like okay, well let, oh, I need to get this weapon. Where do I go in the map? Who do I speak to? Have I progressed that side quest to do this to do that? And uh, yeah, that, that that's immensely fun, and the game's great. Well, what I've also kind of enjoyed and noticed a lot is that there's so many parts of this map and the game where it feels like they've taken the feeling of, say, like Bloodborne or Sekiro. And, you know, there's some bits where, like it feels very Sekiro. You know, there's a outside the capital, there's this massive battleground, and that just feels feels like one of Sekiro bosses. And there's one of the bits, I'm not sure if it's in the, um, I think it might be one of the underground bits, it feels very, very, very Bloodborne. Um, mm. And just like, you know, the way the architecture is designed and, and also, you know, some people might be playing like a Sekiro-style samurai build or, you know, something a bit more Bloodborne-like. So I love the fact, I love the way they've kind of included parts of their previous games and depending on what game you love them. If you love Bloodborne or if you love Sekiro or love Dark Souls, you can play in that kind of way. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely obsessed with it at the moment. Uh, I've still got so much to do that I'm nowhere near, like, the end. Um, I'm only just in the, uh, the... Where the fuck am I? Um, the the capital. I'm in the capital now. I'm exploring it. It's like a massive maze-like... Um, like location it looks absolutely gorgeous architecture wise uh, i think i definitely mentioned it last week but it feels like everywhere i go the next place looks even more beautiful i went yeah. underground um in my coming one i think it's like that it's i'm not sure how you pronounce it i went in one of the underground bits where you just see like stars over and it looked mm. absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful um yeah that's all i've been playing the boss down there is so good well, yeah, you, you you've been well, well you, you've been up three thirty in the morning twice in a row yeah on Friday and Saturday. How yeah. do you function after that? Like genuinely, how? It's a do lot you of function? coffee. And I've and I've had to do loads of DIY, loads of DIY this weekend as well. Went pumpkin patch. Did took LED golf Saturday morning at nine o'clock. It's just I don't know. It just how? Just fucking. Hell. I don't so know. You took LED. You slept for what? You couldn't have slept for more than like four hours. Yeah, probably. Three yeah. Hours? Yeah. We left here like twenty five past eight on Saturday morning. Hey, take it to golf. Nah, not for me. Whatever, oh, man. Yeah. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, just look, a couple of coffees and I'm fine. But um, yeah, starting. Um, yeah, I think I think 83 or so hours. But um, I'm still nowhere near, say, like Sean and, and Miles Way. But Sean, have you been playing it this week? So I know last week you said you got back into it. Uh, only a bit. Um, yeah, I haven't really made any progress. I've I've been investigating around. Um, so not the volcano manor, but there's like a ca- like another castle near that. I've forgotten the name of it. Shaded like, Castle. Yes, yeah, with a big mm. poison maker. So I basically cleared that out. Um, awesome. So it was it was one of those where I was like, oh, do you know what? That's like a like a manageable task as like a way back in, right? It's like an area that I'm more or less the right level for, and and like a you know, like clearing that out feels like an achievable goal. But I was just like, this is fucking miserable. It's one of the most miserable bits of the game. Yeah, it's not not so a great. <laughs> so I, I can't I try explore. It, but... It's not a fun place to explore because you're constantly getting yeah. poisoned. It's... Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, sort of glad I did that, but also like this wasn't. You know, I was like, yeah, this this wasn't like the best way back in necessarily. Uh, I'm just putting off the 
the mountain bit at the end because I know it's going to be really hard. But you're uh, in that, was it Land of the Giants? Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, that also or something similar to that. Yeah, so I've, I've made it there um, and like fought a couple of the guys there and was like, oh no, I haven't got the, <laughs> I haven't got the attention span for this right now. Um, but I know yeah, that is that is where I need to be now, I think. Do you think you're going to try and get it finished before the end of the year? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. James was telling me like that Land of the Giants is up the, on the, like, the final stretch or yes. so anyway. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if final stretch is the same in my world as James is, where he can probably get like six bosses done in an evening, mm-hmm. whereas it might take me hours to do one. But um, still, um, it's, did, it's, you, um... did you play this uh, campaign? Yeah, I finished it. Yeah, I, how long did it take you? 168 hours. Whoa. Wow. Blind. Yeah. So did James? Just, I mean, James seems pretty in, insisting, insistent that he's he's explored like loads. No, he said he. It's a, no, no, he said no, no, he, he said as low as he hasn't yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Oh, and he's kind of go. He did say go back to it, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, he said this whole mass like, areas he hasn't seen, but he's just right. done the essentials. But then, like, I mean, Matt, you'll know, like, the fact that he's got like the mimic tier, for example, like you got to go out of your way to get that. Like, he's definitely yeah, seen I'm... stuff off the beaten path. But mm. yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but if you're following a guy that says go here and pick up that, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What that's that's say? um, yeah. but you know, that's that's the way. I suppose that's the way you do it quickly, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Uh, I mean, I I I loaded it up mm-hmm. uh, this week, and then I walked around that place again with the red sky, and I went in the swamp, and I was like, oh, I don't yeah. Know. Uh, yeah, you know, but Caleb is case... miserable. Caleb is miserable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and I just I haven't got it in me to push past it. This, I think it's a mental thing at the moment. <laughs> my life feels that pla- like that place so it's like <laughs> I don't want to spend any more time in it um, yeah I'm constantly amazed about the adventure and the places you can mm-hmm. kind of see and go and yeah it's such a massive game that's you know I had, I had this kind of weird kind of realisation that you know some people this world's so massive that some people could just spend their time underground and never see above ground and never see all the adventures that are happening vice versa you know there's just it's just Sorry. such a massive. I don't know. I just kind of imagine a lot of people in in, in the world. It feels so well realized and so massive that there's just like a massive underground a- a- area, which is so They're big. It's people, like bigger than some game. There's like lobsters in there. The dude. Yeah, there's just there's, and there's, there's the, the people. Locations so diverse as well. Well, no, well the horn people. Yeah. Still They're, people. Yeah, They're not real though, are they? Well, not none of it's real, Dave. That's no, a computer game, <laughs> David. Computer game. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. never, <laughs> never seen one of them in my life. Yeah, um, I, I never go down there and say, "Some people live here without no." No, I know what you mean. They're, they're sort of spirit. Matt, I think you might creatures. be losing it, mate. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't no, know what I'm talking about. I just, just realised that's too much. Is, right? No, yeah, I, I know it's... what he means. It's just the, there's no, some of those. Sean, don't stick up with me. No, no, Sean understands good. Okay, thank God. Okay. They're just they're, yeah, there are areas in that game where it's like yeah, like say Matt, like when you see like those the the minotaurs um, hanging around in those underground bits, it's like oh yeah, like this is where they live. Like this, yeah. this is their, they like, don't know. There's like, a whole world out there. There's no, I'm not saying like oh, there's like oh, there's a town. There's the fucking toilets or no, well, it, I don't know. It's just structure down there. It's not like they're. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is madness. I shouldn't have smoked about? a doob before yeah. the pod. Yeah. Um, yeah, great uh, game. I'm looking forward to playing more. Um, that okay. That's it for me. Okay. Uh, ask me what I thought about Elden Ring. You did? Uh, we did, mate. I'll ask again. Okay. What did you think about Elden Ring? It's ahead of, it's ahead of its time. It is. Cool. It is. <laughs> um, Sean? What have you been playing this week? Hello, uh, got a couple, both fairly brief. Uh, so I've been playing Moonbreaker. Um, this is the I've new. I've heard of this. Yeah, I've so this. Um, you're thinking is... about Moonraker, oh, the that... Bond movie. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about Bond. Yeah, you're right. Um, so this is from uh, the people who made. Oh my god, I've forgotten the name. The underwater survival one. Leisure suit Larry. Leisure suit Larry. Who? Um, it's by them, and um, but this is a turn-based strategy game. But it's you know, with you mean this... Subnautica? Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, that's right, I've seen screens of this. It looks wild. Yeah, and it's well, yeah, it's, it's a turn-based strategy game, but it's it very much leans into like the idea that it's like a virtual like miniatures game, right? So it's like yeah. Warhammer or whatever. Um, in the you know, like it, 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 like you have like your your little army and you build sort of squads. 
um, that you think all sort of you know work well together. Is but this each the one where those... you can paint your miniatures? It is, yeah. That's so each right. each one of those, obviously, there, there's like a default paint job, but then yeah, if you want to paint them, you can. Um, so you, you can, if you want, you can go into this in-game, um, you know, uh, painting thing where you can like tilt models, move them around, and and yeah, use the mouse to. Um, to paint them and the, like are you the... actually painting them or are you just like you just got the little paint bucket thing you got <laughs> red beard <laughs> bloop, pink so you Is are that... actually painting it by hand there are oh, tools shit. so you can like so if you're like painting a character's face for example you can hold a key so that you know no matter where the mouse goes it will only ever paint that surface right oh, so it's I not going to so. go onto the oh, beard or the hat or the or whatever yep. um, so stuff like that for people like me who are cack handed I haven't really tried doing this yet um, but it's a really nice thing to have, right? It's it's a nice idea, um, and I like the idea of like playing against other people and sort of seeing what they've done with the characters. Yeah, um, I heard one other podcast talking about this saying like, wouldn't it be great if you could uh, if you had licenses and you could import, I don't know, Warhammer sets or whatever, and some right, people could yeah. spend their time just doing this, yeah, and just painting in in the game, yeah, just yeah, amiibos, yeah. just tons of amiibos, <laughs> just painting those amiibos. It's like there. it almost makes me wonder if it would be cooler if there wasn't like a default coloring for each character right and it was just like there's the miniature yeah but some people just don't want to do that well exactly yeah um or or maybe yeah no maybe the default default is none and then you there's like an auto paint button where then you get to see it yeah yeah yeah. um but yeah the actual uh strategy game itself um seems really cool so far it's very short it's very like um so you know whereas like warhammer or traditional warhammer it's you know big armies and stuff um obviously there's like necromunda and stuff which is like smaller squads it's more like that in that you have one unit that's like your captain um so you know they're like pretty powerful they have loads of hit points but if they die you lose like that's that's how you beat the other team you have to defeat their their captain um and yeah and then so then and then you're calling like your other units in and they all have um different abilities and actually quite funny voice or not funny voice lines just very well acted and charming um like nothing you know none of it's made me laugh out loud but it's all they all suggest that they actually have personalities right they actually they are actually characters they're not just um you know just units on a battlefield and also the fact that like when you so when you move one on the battlefield right it's it's not like you know there's no like hand that comes in and moves them around but they move as if they are being manipulated by someone's hand, and rather than just being like picked up and That's dropped, nice. they'll do like a little like do, 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 like a little walk animation, <laughs> like yeah, <if> you're... <laughs> <that. Yeah. laughs> um, which you know again, it's little touches like that go a long way towards it. Just like just having a bit of character, yeah, a bit um, of personality, yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, and like I say, the, the the battles play out really quickly. It it feels um, like it takes a lot from like computer card games, right? Yeah. Like it's a little bit hearthstone and stuff. So you have like you know, you have like an energy, you know, like a, a resource that you use to do like special attacks or um or summon new units and that sort of gets replenished every turn and you get a bit more every turn as well. So things sort of escalate as the battle goes on. Um and yeah, and like so I've mainly been using like this one captain. So it's just an example of the sort of strategic stuff you can do. Um where he, his thing is that you can throw these like like proximity mines but then he also has an ability that like vacuums a bunch of units together in one place so right so my thing is like if i can sort of predict where the enemy's coming at me from i can start laying these mines turn by turn and then hopefully um you know the enemy hasn't got too wise to what i'm going to do and then sort of get them all in one place draw them all together with the vacuum thing blow them all up um and then i'll position like shooters sort of all around to try and distract them and make sure they don't just shoot the mines and, and blow them up before they get close enough stuff like that um and like i say it all the battles seem to be really quick like they're all they're all over in sort of five ten minutes um which is really nice as well i haven't played against other people yet i'm assuming that's going to be a humbling experience um the ai seems really ruthless at first but then it's pretty manageable after you've had a few games um the only thing is well two things it's early access and you can tell um, like it's it's functionally it's great um you know i've not had any like technical issues or anything there's just not a huge amount there yet so there's only like three of those captains right um and obviously you know there's tons of units besides them but obviously the captain you pick is sort of a starter in terms of the sort of strategy you're going to be using 
So obviously it's going to get more of those, but it does feel a little bit limited as it currently stands. Um, the other thing is fucking microtransactions in it. Oh, like, really? Like a lot. <laughs> like, and you know, bear in mind this game is, I can't remember if it's full price, it's like 25 quid maybe. Um, and yeah, it, it just it just feels a little bit grubby. Um, you can earn booster packs through like in-game play and like ticking off certain objectives and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just how pervasive they are and like upfront like on you know on the menus and stuff um feels a bit gross for a game that people are paying a fair whack for already so i i don't know how the community has responded to it obviously it's early access maybe this stuff will get changed um yeah i don't know just just felt a bit unnecessary is there a a camp a story campaign or is it just those battles it it does this really interesting thing actually so i'll say interesting it's i don't know it's quite it's got a cool way of doing it in the so obviously we're in season one right it's just launched in early access um and basically what appears to be uh the way they're going to do it is that so on the main menu like a, a sort of at the top of the screen there's like a play button um and you click that and there's basically like a 10 minute like radio play effectively of like the story so far um, yeah i've just found it on the way i went to the official website and at the bottom you can subscribe to the podcast and i was like what is this right. yeah it's an audio drama series exploring exploring mm. the world and the characters from yeah, the game yeah, yeah um so that yeah that that's in the game as well um this is quite a nice way of doing things. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. I'd probably rather, like, yeah, consume that as a podcast rather than load the game up just to sit on the main menu and listen to yes. it. Yes. Um, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, which you can do because it's available everywhere. But um... It's also better than having, like, fucking... Most games just have that in text in the menu as well, don't they? Yeah. Do you want to be yeah, more exactly. yeah. Whereas, yeah, with something like a radio drama is relatively inexpensive to produce still. But gives it a lot more life than just yeah, but like a ton I would of go more. For the worse voice actors I could find as well to do. <laughs> it's just funnier in it to listen to that. <laughs> Isn't that? Yeah. Um. No. On we'll the best we'll, biz. We'll uh, we'll do it, Dave. Don't worry. Um. The only other thing <laughs> I've really played uh, is Splatoon Three. I ended up finishing the campaign because um, obviously Isaac was really poorly um, last week, and he just wanted to watch me play Splatoon. Um. Right. So yeah, I finished the campaign. Um, really enjoyed it. How hard it. was it? You really struggle with the final boss? Uh... I didn't. I have to say, thought it was all right. But isn't there post game stuff, Matt? That yeah. So if if you like, uh... have finished every, I can't remember what to call, but every one of the missions basically, right. then post game a golden one yeah, opens up, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you're in for a treat. I mean, I gave up. There's basically like a, a rock hard level that mm. I think lasts like 20, 25 minutes. There's oh, very few checkpoints. And um, yeah, I was like, fuck that. I tried, tried for an hour and a half. Not for me. Yeah, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the single player. I know like, you know, a lot of people saying it doesn't exactly do a lot, but mm. I, I found it compelling enough. There's some tricky bits. It's fun to use all the mission, all the, mm. play all the weapons. And yeah, I thought it was good. I really like that like towards the end, there's like a few missions that are just like, Hey, here's just a series of encounters, and here's like the special move you need to just do it. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, like, we spoke about really this on the cool. pod a while ago, and you were saying I like, wish as a kind of a multi-stage yeah. mission. That's yeah, basically yeah. what the last mission is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, that, that that last boss fight was really fun as well. Um, really enjoyed that. Although it was really sad because Isaac was. Uh, I mean, can I, can I say who the boss is? It's not a spoiler, is it? Really, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it doesn't oh, even okay. make any fucking sense. Um, oh, it's it's Gri- it's Grizz, the guy who runs Salmon Run. Like, okay. like he's the villain, and you defeat him, and Salmon Run still exists. So I don't really know how how that works. That's fine. Um, it's a video game, and it doesn't matter. Well, yeah. Um, so yeah, but it basically, yeah, Isaac was freaked out by the way Grizz looked. So he asked me to stop playing as we got to the final boss, and then oh, really? just, then just had to then just did it when he fell asleep. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I had a completely different experience with this game than you this week. I sold it. Mm. Oh, oh wow. That's really backfired. That's a shame. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just got to the point where I put it <coughs> in again and I went, oh, this is this is the same game. Like, I, it's the same reason why I got the amp with Overwatch 2. Mm. I mean, there's a little bit more to this. But... Because you could log in, you could play you know, Splatoon, couldn't you say? So? Oh, you could. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just thought... The, oh, the boys have been asking for um, Let's Go Pikachu. Mm-hmm. So, and I looked, and I could just do a straight swap for it in CEX. And I know technically, it's you know you would expect Let's Go Pikachu to be a lot cheaper or whatever. Mm-hmm. So probably lost out a bit of money. But I think I only paid thirty quid for it from uh, 
from shot two when that game come out and i just thought i'm not going to play this again that's a problem it's um it's just it I, I it's a game that i got tired of back at during splatoon 2 and then yeah. splatoon 3 doesn't do enough for me to pull through like mm. i see ben saying but you pay fifa 23 but yeah i don't get bored of that like <laughs> i didn't get bored of that and give up any points so, yeah um that's just sort of consistent i i i you know i I know it's very popular and people love it. Um, I just I've I haven't got a crew that are going to play regularly and uh, yeah. and to get into it, you know, in a big, well, big way. So. Now neither have I, Dave. So thanks. <laughs> we never played it. We <laughs> had one night on it, didn't we? And what one a night. night it was. When was that? I can't remember. Right, <laughs> right. Can't launch week. It was launch yeah. night, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> All on Discord. Do you have a Switch, uh, Capone? Uh, yeah. Uh, which Switch have you got? Oh, just the old one. Is that... one switch. Who's uh? I was thinking, sure, that this week playing on my Switch uh, OLED model. I was thinking, do I regret this or the PS4 Pro more? I'm trying to work, <laughs> trying to work out. At least the PS4 Pro was 4K. That had a well, noticeable difference. Was it? it wasn't, though, was it? Yeah. It was more <laughs> 4K than the that. PS4 was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> You're right. The PS4 Pro was more 4K than the uh, than the PS4 was. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I mean, I'm just I've I've I'm just been playing uh, Luminez on it again, and actually that should have got a Steam Deck. I don't know, man. I the Steam the Steam Deck I still think is going to be something that I'd play for half an hour and then it would go in a drawer somewhere. Oh, I don't Whereas, know. Mate. Well, no, but you like indie good. games. Like, there's a lot of indie games out and Ooh. coming out forever. Mm-hmm. But, Coming out forever. Coming out forever. <laughs> okay. yeah. they they're not going to stop, forever. are they? Well, look, I, you know, uh, uh, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Some maybe Santa will bring it. Out I'm surprised you haven't ordered one, Matt. Well, you know, why are you, why are you surprised, David? If I couldn't get it day one, <laughs> that's <laughs> well, why I haven't got it. Because it feels like there's been a resurgence and everyone's getting it on Twitter now. And I thought, oh, Matt will be all over this. Yeah, no, I'm um, maybe next year, but this year, new, no, can't do it this year. I, I should you, say, uh, Capone, have you got a Steam Deck? No. Oh, okay. Well, uh... Uh, I, I should say, I might have to send my Steam Deck back. <gasps> Whoa! It's developed a minor fault. What's happened? Yeah, Has it gone on it's fire? the. Um, so you know, last week I was saying how the the haptics on the touchpads are amazing. Um. It, like it still works 100% just that for whatever reason whenever it goes into standby it starts doing this like noise really yeah um oh. and like and i mentioned it to new she was like yeah isaac walked downstairs this morning was going mental because he couldn't figure out what this noise was oh, and i was like yeah shit. sorry that was yeah um yeah right. so I, I have to like fully power it down or else it keeps doing it like it's like it's not the end of the world it's just a bit annoying and presumably will Drastically reduce yeah. the life of the haptics if it have, have others. Have, have you have you googled it and found others with the same complaint? Like, no, no one. I've, I haven't found anyone else with Try the same re- issue. Rebooting it from scratch. I have factory settings. Yeah. Oh right. I've and I've, always done and I've it tried all. the yep. uh, tried all. the beta firmware track as well. Nothing. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've sent I've sent annoying. Gabe a message saying, "Oi, yeah. what the fuck?" <laughs> Gabe. But yeah. have you been playing it loads apart from that? Well, yeah, because this, this is what this I've been is a week too, isn't it? I want to hear more about it. Um, this is what I've been playing Moonbreaker on. Um, and okay. I've put like four hours into that. Um, I've also I wasn't going to talk about it this week. I've also been playing a load, load of Loop Hero. Uh, oh yeah, really enjoying that, awesome. that. But I just again want to, you know, it's one of those like I've, I feel like I've put sort of two three hours in. But I don't really feel like I've made re- like any progress that's yet the um, game... oh do you like it that, that that's the game that james said looked like sick on a yes screen. yes yeah yeah <laughs> like sick on a screen it it's a great game though <laughs> yeah i can't remember when i came out but i really enjoyed it when i played it. i didn't play yeah. like tons but mm. what i did play it was really really good mm. um good. obviously are you tempted to get the official doc Sean, obviously that's out now or so, available now. What's that point if you've got like you've got a proper PC set up, haven't you? Well, yeah, but it's at, at my desk where I don't really like playing yeah. games. So oh, okay. straight on his 4K TV, one. bang. Yeah, but then obviously it's not going to run much in 4K, right? So it's still going to be in 1280 by 800. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, I mean the official dock is tempting because I didn't really, obviously it's more expensive than all the unofficial ones. Mm. Um, and I was like, ha, ah, I'm not an idiot. I'm, I'm not paying more for that. But I didn't realize it comes with like a 45 watt or a 65 watt um, charger. 
Um, whereas none of the un- the unofficial ones are literally it's just the dock like you got to provide your own charger and the sixty five watt one is not standard right it's not easy yeah to hold and, and it's got tons of ports all sorts yeah you know. <clears throat> so basically um, like so the like the charger that comes with the Steam Deck is forty five watts which is the speed that the Steam Deck charges at so if you plugged that into an unofficial dock as soon as you plug any other USB stuff in that's then taking away some of the charging ability that's going to the Steam Deck do you know what I mean. Um, Sorry, this is really boring. I've just realised. Uh, no, no, it's good. But yeah, I mean, I saw a bunch of people saying, "Oh, the docks out," and I'm like, "Well, hang, like hmm. you could have bought a twenty quid one." But then yeah. I see people saying, "Well, no, look at this." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I guess right. I can see why you would yeah. want to get the official one." Yeah, right. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, Dave. I mean, not a week goes by where I'm not tempted, but um, uh, um, maybe, maybe next year. Yeah. It does look, does it cool? And more people are like, oh, you can do this now. What was that thing in the news, Sean? I know you saw it the other day where you can like, you, there's an adapter where you can play like Game Boy Advance cartridges or whatever it is. Oh, that's using. right. Yeah, I think it's it, yeah, that's like an accessory that's existed for a while, right? And yeah, they've they've yeah. confirmed it's it's working just fine with Steam Deck. So yeah. Oh right, so you just plug it into a USB thing. Then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, uh, I'll go through what I've been playing. Uh, we had a few messages saying that they would like a weekly update on how the Pro Clubs team is doing. So. I'm Would here you? to give you uh, a weekly really? update. Basically, our fortunes, right? We're called Minty Biscuit, the the uh, our football team, our football club. It's called Minty Biscuit after the famous Barry from Watford call, uh, where he talks about a Minty Biscuit over and over again. Um, and uh, we, I don't know why we named our club after that, but we have. Um, there's been some wild developments, Sean. For starters, mm-hmm. we have been promoted to Div Five. Blimey. We shot up the leagues. We played a night mm-hmm. two nights ago. We played. Six games, six wins. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Six nice. wins. Nice. S-Bab, short back and buff, yeah. was on fire. Back in the <laughs> left, right and centre. But there's been some sad news uh, in the club because we've we've lost a player. Uh, Matt Murray has refused to join us. And it would... St- I mean, John uh, Denton, who's the manager of uh, Mini Biscuit FC, uh, he has stated that he's looking for a transfer fee for Matt. Uh, because clearly he's never going to play for the club again. No, that, that's not. No, it's just, it's just a long injury, and I, I think I should be I should be fit by November. Well, here's the December awkward. Time. Here's the awkwardness, Sean. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Dung joined us in Matt's position um, the first night he was off. Mm. Matt, how many goals have you scored for the Minty Bisque? Um, three. I don't know. Three, three goals over the... Um... I haven't put any... I, I don't get that far forward. I haven't put any points into scoring. You don't get that far forward. You fucking goal hang, even though you're on the <laughs> Not wing, <Matt>. absolute bollock. <laughs> absolute bollock, you know yeah. that. At one point, you shouted out, what am I doing yeah, yeah. here? At, at one point, yes, I've gone a bit further forward, but I'm not like there at the end of crosses. Put it this way, Sean. Mm. Um, uh, Mr. Dung, who joined the uh, team this this uh, this week, mm. he, he joined um, and positioned himself in Matt's position. He scored three in one night. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. various different assists. He was yeah. played someone passed to it, brilliant. Right? Mm. <laughs> oh, oh, is this... You're, you're blaming it, us happen, right? I assume your someone poor passed him and... performance. Is that no, it? I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, I mean, it's, it's great. I'm happy for them to join the club, but... But hold on. We're... Me and... Chris and I are strikers. Why would we pass to the left... Like, we, we're the ones getting in the box trying to score the goals. Yeah, I'm the one putting the crosses in. Oh, you don't Good know, pass. Matt. That's the problem. I'm on set pieces, so I am. Yes. Well, yeah, and we've all seen your set pieces. You very rarely get it inside the Not penalty. true. Yeah. we got to go on the night you're off. Great guy, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, Matt's done. Matt is. There's no way Matt's coming back. I will be back. I'm just need to get Elden Ring done. I'll be back. Wait, and what's out after Elden Ring? Um, be, you're, you've God you've got War. God of War coming soon. Well, are you not going to play God of War too? Yeah, I'm absolutely going to play God of War, but I'm still going to be with a minty bisque until... You know. Well, I can never play FIFA every night and then not yes. play any other games. Oh, so... no, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We play FIFA between the hours of 10 and 12. So why don't you play FIFA between, between the hours of 10 and 12 for the bisque, right? And then you've got three and a half hours of Elden Ring to do <laughs> after that. Well, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I could do that, but I can't be on yeah, to that. You could like, do that with your friends, night. game with your mates for a little bit, and then have some alone time. You've also saved time by not playing Bayonetta 3. Yeah, you don't need to play that anymore. Um, but no, things are looking up for the bisque. Things are looking up for the minty bisque. You know, Good. the gaffer, he's rallied the troops. Um, Chris and S Bab up, up front, we're really banging them in. So um, it's good. It's looking good. Div 5. Div 5, it's a tough league. Yeah, I've never been that high. 
No, no, and you probably, you know, you will never. I be. will be back. I miss it. It's. I just need. I want to get. I want to get Elden Ring done. That's. That's it. All right. Well, Can't we, do both. We need commitment, Matt. This football club is not. I. On, I will. I I'll give you commitment now. I'll Could give you commitment now. I'll be back. Could you imagine that? David Beckham can't play this week because he's got something else to do. He's washing the car. <laughs> I mean, John did kick a boot into my eye. That's why I can't play. Okay. That's, um, a, that's a famous Alex Ferguson yes, I know, the boot. Alex Ferguson <laughs> gag there. But, oh, we, I just realised that we're talking about David Beckham and he hasn't played professionally for about 10 years. <laughs> um, right, okay. So that's the update on FIFA 23 Pro, Pro Clubs. I'm still pissed off that you can't get a bald head or you know a proper short back and buff haircut. Um, they, they haven't changed that. Sure, they've not changed that. It's absolutely ridiculous. Apparently, get this. If you create a character in career mode, yeah, you you can have all that stuff. So they've just taken it out of oh. the Pro Club stuff for some reason. How weird. And also, I've started a, a career with Harry. One of the most ir irritating things of all time. Honestly, every top. So we're playing co-op um, and we're playing a season as Millwall with signing players and all this sort of stuff. It's great. But every time he will pass me the ball and then go pass, pass, pass it, pass, pass. And I'm going, Harry... Harry, I know you want the ball back at some point, but you can't start shouting pass at me the moment you pass me the ball. You can't, it cannot work like this. I'm, like, I'm getting a bit... Uh, but yeah, that's that's FIFA 23. Been putting way too much time into that. And also, yeah, Luminez. But look, you, there are games that I put an insane amount of hours in in the week that's not worth talking about on this show. That's what I'm saying. Um, but the main game I want to talk about this week is a game called... Um, Poor Patro Grand Prix. On Game oh Pass. yeah, yeah, yeah. We played you a bit of this. Sean? Yeah, Isaac's a fan, obviously. So, well, for those of you that don't know, um, the Poor Patrol <laughs> are on their fastest mission yet. You know, and uh, <laughs> to, to win the world, uh, the the Pup Cup, um, where no track is too big and no racer too small. Um, you you can race around Adventure Bay, Jake's Snowboarding Resort, and the Jungle as the Paw Patrol pups, um, and up to four players at once, Sean. Yeah, I believe it or yeah, not. Uh, yeah. But look out for the obstacles left by the mischievous Mayor Humdinger. All right, uh, this kart racer includes an easy control option uh, for little ones with auto acceleration to guide them around the track, as well as a hard mode for experienced track stars. Dave, as... are we sponsored by Paw Patrol Grand Prix this week? Well. Wait, wait one moment. You're about to find out. So buckle up uh, for a pawsome race uh, around 11 tracks uh, with your best pup pals. It's fucking awful, Matt. It's terrible. It's <laughs> awful. It's, it's, so, it's so insultingly bad. that. So we did one level, um, Charlie and I, and the, the edges, it was a snowy level, and there's snow around the edge of the track, and it just glitches on and off. Just throughout the whole time you're playing it, it's just flickering, glitching. Yeah. So you can see through the snow, and it's just turning on and off as you turn the corners and stuff. It's got the same like sound effects being played over and over again. So every time you boost, one of your characters says something. And Ryder, I posted on Twitter, Ryder keeps saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, <laughs> every time you boost. That's awkward. Joe walked in and said, what the fuck is he doing? Don't get me started on Ryder. He's anyways. coming, Joe. Ryder is clearly some sort of weird, he's a proper little weirdo, he is a hanging freak. around with dogs all day, chatting yep. to them. No one else can hear dogs talk. The, the mayor's in that game. I mean, why is Humdinger so set on being a fucking prick all the time? <laughs> Like on this one, they, they, they're just racing around, and he's like, "I'm going to chuck haystacks on the fucking car, on, on the track." <laughs> so the poor patrols are like, why, like driving into haystacks. That's a hazard. Also, like, I mean, and this isn't unique to Paw Patrol. Like, this happens in a lot of kids' TV programs. But did you ever just watch it? It's like, fucking arrest the cunt. Yeah, he's, he's committing <laughs> crimes. Yeah, but, but they're just like, ah, he's got one of the worst though. Because Chase the... hasn't got the dexterity in his paws to uh, operate some handcuffs. <laughs> it's totally pointless. And uh, don't get me started on Marshall, who, uh, quite frankly, is insulting to the firefighters around the yep. world because yep. he's scared of everything. You're supposed to be running into burning buildings, man. Yeah, he doesn't deserve the badge. He does no. not deserve the bat. And I like the fact now that they want to sell more stuff, right? Mm. But they've run out of ideas. Yeah. So, I mean, it was bad enough when they said Everest Mountain one. 
Yeah. Mountain one. Okay. Okay. Well, because okay. Everest okay. was was made partly in response to the fact that everyone pointed out it's like look, of out of all the original set of Paw Patrol characters, like right, you've got one female dog, and she's like half the size of all the others. She always <laughs> yeah. stands at the back. <laughs> like yeah. it's a bit embarrassing. So like, oh well, all right, we'll make one that's like cool and tough, and that's well, where Everest at. Okay, in well. this game, Sean, it goes, oh, you could be the new Paw Patrol, Rex, and I went. There's a new one. Went, well, it? hold on. I went. I didn't know there was. I said, Charlie, do you know who Rex is? Yeah. I said, I don't know Rex. What's Rex? What's his thing? Because we we got the recycle one. Yeah. We got the you know all right. We got the rubble. I mean, how emergency services? This is just he digs up roads or whatever. Whatever. Rubble's all but right. Then he but goes, it's probably my favorite. Di- dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. I, said, <laughs> I said Rex, is the dinosaurs one. So and he's right. Are you talking? What are you talking about? Do you know Rex? He's like an archaeologist one, isn't he? Or oh, he's a de- yeah. But how is that an emergency service? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the not. seventh emergency service. That's what it's on the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Find some bones in your garden. You phone uh, Rex. Do you want, do, 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 fire, police, ambulance, or archaeologist? <laughs> <laughs> when you ring up. Look, I don't like the world of Paw Patrol. I think Mayor Hunting yeah. is a fucking arsehole, to be quite honest with you. And, yep. you know, Mayor Goodway. You know, not hearts in the right place, but completely inept. Yeah. You know, cares more about a chicken than what's going down in Adventure Bay. That bloody uh, chicken. This game is a fucking pile of shit, and I've had to play it all weekend because <laughs> Harry wants me to unlock Rex. But I don't know how to unlock the fucking dinosaur one. I've tried. I've I, I, the, the the first race that I did, I unlocked one of the characters, and I went, okay, clearly you complete a race, you unlock a character. I did four more races, didn't unlock one. Um, for some reason, it doesn't just let you do it in multiplayer mode. It's a fucking sham of a game. Thank God it's on Game Pass. Don't buy it. I mean, uh, it's it's marginally less insulting than the than fucking Race with Ryan. It's the same game. It's, it's well, same Race game with Ryan was also like played Race with Wyatt, Ryan. But there, but then there's week. no um, like assists in that, is there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, oh, there yeah, is. You okay. can turn it all on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, yeah, I hate you, it. You, you have to you um, have to turn it on. So in this one. It turns on by default mm-hmm. in Paw Patrol, but on Ryan's World, you have to turn it on. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I, the, the most amazing thing about Race with Ryan is the fact that the guy is making millions and millions and millions of dollars a day, right? Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. this little kid. Can't afford a good microphone to record no. the audio. Yeah. To... That's just a phone on a tripod, isn't it? I want to know what mm. come out first. <laughs> what are they um, called? OG games? Are they <coughs> OG games or? Yeah, OG? so they they've got a ton of like kids stuff on Game Pass. There's like a a Ben Ten game. There's a couple of Paw Patrol ones. One of which I have literally 100 percented. By the way, yeah, oh, right. what, pro what, gamer. The roll. Yeah, uh, the one they, where you no, it's run the... around collecting all the bones and that. So I think that's the more recent one. There's, there was one before that that's like adventure. It's like oh, pup, super pup save adventure base. Oh, super like pup save. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, one yeah. I'm thinking of. It was yeah, yeah. dog shit, but. Uh, but it, it, but it is at least oh, like is great. Okay. It is at least like designed for children, right? Like it's what, yes. it was one of the first games that Isaac could play on his own because it reads everything out to him. It's really yeah. simple, um, so I can't give it too much shit because he did genuinely enjoy it. Um, but you know, he was three at the time, so yeah. Um... Doesn't know. Doesn't know any better. Have you no. played uh, this game, Adam? Uh no. <laughs> You can write right games. That's what they're called. I think they're called. I thought they were called OG, right? Because... Oh, that's right. So because it comes up with OG, yeah, it's outright. Yeah, because because yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Charlie, every time that comes up, he goes, it, it comes up OG, and he shouts out OG original gangster, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> which cheers me up every time. Um, I'm, I want to know. I'm assuming that Ryan's World Racing, whatever, come out before I'm outright sure ga- he... uh, b- before Grand Prix. Yeah, right, I think it did. Trouble. Because mm. They've clearly learnt a few lessons. Not enough, mm, but they've yeah. learnt a few lessons, though, because that, yeah. The, fucking Ryan's World with the racing game of that. Some of the characters are bigger than the fucking screen. <laughs> so you can't even see where you're going. Yeah. It's, ridi- it's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, don't play these games. They're a pile of shit. The other game I've been playing this week is Pilot Wings 64. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That I didn't realise I was this nostalgic for that game. Because <laughs> it come up on my Switch. It was like, hey... You got yeah. pilot wings now, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Okay, I'll load that up." And I was like, "I don't remember it that well. I remember 
like flying around the map and you know certain bits and pieces mm. when i heard that music like i was like whoa i'm being transported back into my bedroom like that doo -doo 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 -doo. get the locks on <laughs> like, oh my god this is this is wonderful mm. and it's still really good fun to play it still cool. feels brilliant to play um, are you more fonder of the 64 over the super nintendo version? absolutely yes yeah. okay yeah, yeah, totally. I, I, I found, I think I found the. It might have just been my age, actually, Capone. But, um, I think I found it more accessible the the sixty four, mm. um, and I just loved it, man. It, 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 it was just so good to just go and explore that map and flying around because it was like a condensed, um, America, wasn't it? You could go mm. and fly and find Mount Rushmore and all that sort of stuff, and then shoot it. And uh, Mario's face turns into Wario's face. All those little bits and pieces come back to me just hearing that music. It was so good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think I would love to see the series again. I mean, there's stuff that you could do with it. Um, but I remember the the, um, the 3DS game that they brought out was a complete piss take, wasn't it? Mm. The people completing yeah. it in like 30 minutes or whatever and... Just barely it was, any content. Yeah. Uh, people do defend it and say, like, no, there's like there's loads of like extra challenges and stuff. Like the actual campaign isn't really the end of it. But yeah, m m by most people's reckoning, it was a very short game. Yeah, I remember being really angry at it when I played it and thinking mm. this is not this is mm. not what I wanted. Yeah. But you and think... that came out ten years ago. I thought that wasn't that long ago. Yeah, ten years ago. It yeah. came out in November. 2020. Yeah, it was quite uh, early on in the 3DS lifespan. I, like, I'm, I'm just thinking, I wish Nintendo would pick up some of this stuff again. You know, even if they yeah. do a lower budget version, release them for 30 quid, mm. you know, it doesn't need to be... Map, but could you imagine a really nice big map to fly around in and explore um, much like what um, Pilot Wing 64 felt like at the time, mm. you know? Felt really special. Um, I wish Nintendo wouldn't disregard some of their the IPs that they've just got, you know, like including, I know F-Zero, we bring it up all the time, but there's little gems here and there that actually, if you just put some time into, mm. it doesn't have to be a full-on, you know, massive project, big budget thing, but just give us something. But I also kind of think that if alive. they put more budget in, these things would probably just be another like 10 million seller, like quietly sell 10 million. Mm. Like, Possibly. I don't know, but I don't know if Pilot Wings would be a 10 million seller. Yeah. But they get it right. I, I don't There's know. no I, reason why they can't. And it's quite amazing that they haven't done something with motion controls and pilot wings. You know what I mean? Like a bird suit. Especially on the Wii. Yeah, Surprised yeah, it's yeah. not a pilot wing game on the Wii where you've like got a flap. Like, I'd imagine it would uh, work very well with um, like streams. Yeah, like, yeah. People streaming different mm. things in pilot wings. Just, just flying around. That. that would be good if you could have like even if it was online and you could fly around and see people, other people in a little server, that's way well, too well, I mean, hang on, yeah, you're definitely pushing it too far now. <laughs> not Nintendo. Like, that, that's like true. It's not, it's not really had its multiplayer moment. Mm. No. Don't but in neither is Nintendo. So, uh, hey. That's a good point. Good point. <laughs> so that's what we've been playing this week. Um, should we get on to questions? Yeah, just a couple of questions. If you want to send us one, go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs. Maria Mendieta says, dear tcgs cold shadows. Uh, with the Steam Deck and various Anburnic devices giving retro games a second life, I wonder how older games could be appraised devoid of nostalgia. According to each of you, what exactly makes an older title worth playing today? Good question. That is a good question. It's usually, it's either like... Either like it's some, usually it's something you've not played before, right? Like if it's something you played before, then the nostalgia is overpowering. It's kind of you know you yeah, can't, can't I, really I help think there's that. There's also that but... risk that you're going to destroy that love. Like nostalgia is such yeah. a positive feeling, but that, that as you say, I mean, Pilot Wings, like I've really enjoyed going back to that. Yeah. But I think that's one of those that I there's a difference between games that you obsess about, you know, mm. for a long period of time. You know, like for me, Banjo Kazooie or Diddy Kong Racing. Mm. Going back to that. Really, you know, I've been back to Banjo Kazooie a fair bit over mm. the past, you know, even five years, but never gone further than maybe one or two levels. Um, because there's part of me that thinks that if I really do stick with this, am I mm. going to get bored of it? And it's mm. going to destroy that sort of love that I have for that game. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, but then, and then there are other games that you remember from ages ago, but like you've kind of forgotten. Like, and Pilot Wings is the perfect example of that, mm. and Wave Race sixty four, which obviously I know those games and I remember those games, but I don't really remember the feeling of playing those games. Mm. And then when I loaded them up on the Switch, I'm like, oh mate, this is really <laughs> weird going back to this, and it feels fantastic. You see, I'll be, I'm, I'm really intrigued to uh, try Pilot Wings sixty four because it, it, that was one of those games that I only ever played like bits of at a mate's house. Mm. so like I, I know what the game is but i don't know how it starts like what is the actual structure oh, I, to or anything you're right? gonna be massively disappointed i, I had a feeling i might be but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah I'm it's a really to... weird setup to that game I'll yeah intrigued to try it but yeah i mean so most of the like the old stuff that i really enjoy and put time into now it, it's usually because a you know it turns out it like did something before edit anything else or even or you know it even like does something that still isn't isn't that common um or it's just something you can play without getting that sense that it is old do you know what i mean there's there's no like there's no design decisions where you're just like oh we won't fucking get away with that now right like i'm gonna get slaughtered for this you know i was i was playing final fantasy 7 um i was gonna the, bring that up actually yeah on the retroid pocket 2 plus oh that's um, right I genuinely do not think it holds up gameplay wise. <gasps> oh, because sure. there are you... uh, early game, there are way too many fights where like Eris has got nothing to do, right? Like, yeah, she's the healer, but most of the time, no one needs healing. It's like, oh, it's Eris's turn. I guess I'll make a whack an enemy for fucking ten damage. <laughs> like. It's just you wouldn't get like that's the sort of thing that wouldn't fly now because we're much better at making sure character like whatever their role like characters are constantly useful right, um, so stuff like that is is what is now jarring, um, whereas you know I'm trying to think of an example now like so when, like when I played um, like Metroid Zero Mission like that that was it was just seamless it was great mm. like you could release that now and and everyone go oh cool it's like a just a really slick 2D Metroid. Um, or like, you know, I, pl- I still played like quite a lot of Pokemon Pinball, the, the Game Boy Advance one. Because mm. it's just a good pinball game. There's yeah. no, there's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing. And like, it's a good pinball game where the whole point is that you, you catch all the Pokemon and you have a Pokedex and, and you know. Um, it's like, yeah, this is exactly what you would ask for in a Pokemon Pinball game in 2022. Like, there's nothing missing there, you know. But yeah, like on the Final Fantasy VII thing, I think it, having not played it when I was younger and only really enjoying it because I played Remake, I think it does hold up. Yeah, I mean, you could argue, you know, what what's, you know, the early game, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, Aerith can obviously heal people, but, you know, she does a little bit of damage, but, you know, you don't need an awful lot at the beginning anyway. anyway but I'm just enjoying that game a lot because of the story, because... You know, it's it's got such a big history with so many people. You know, loved doing it, playing, loved playing it when they're younger, and it's so influential. When some so many people look back on it about how, how with such fond memories. Me having not with the, uh, having not had those fond memories when I was younger, I'm enjoying it now on its own merits. And um, yeah, story wise, it's it's still really really good. I think. I'm so glad you're playing that, uh, Matt. The the original, yeah. With the new one, they really. I think they really messed up some aspects of it. Oh, really? Like what, what? What? Do you mean the changes to the story? Is that what you mean? Yeah, mainly uh, Sephiroth. Uh, he's a much more sinister, more human person, I think, in the, the original. Did, did you find that? Or um, just... I mean, I still feel like I'm early in. I'm well, like, I mean, I've I've just got to hang on. Is it Nibelheim? It's not behind us. I mean, I say pronounce it. Um, Have you done the mission where you're like working alongside Sephiroth? No, no. I've seen him in a bunch of areas, and he's explained a lot of the story. But no, I haven't got to that. I haven't got to that bit okay. yet because um, I've been playing other, other things. But that's that's another game I wanted to get finished before um, Crisis Core Reunions out in December. But probably not going to squeeze everything in. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm also really glad Adam I've gone back to that because again everyone knows my love for the remakes and I've wanted to see how the story progresses and um, so yeah. But I think again not really into these kinds of games typically, but really enjoy what I've played was so far. Ahead of its time, wasn't it really? Uh, when you very much ahead of its time. Very, very much. much. Do you go, do you go back and play uh, older games, Capone? If you do, which ones do you pick out? 
No, not not in general. I kind of it's 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 the uh, when games are free suddenly that you've just not that you've missed out on, and they're suddenly you know in a Game Pass or whatever, then that's usually the time that I give it fifteen minutes. <laughs> it's hold it. Oh, wow, <laughs> mighty fifteen minutes. For a lot of time, yeah. It's my test. <laughs> the Capone Adam test. It's the same with uh, movies as well. Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, I lasted five minutes. What? Five minutes? Come on, that's like a 90 one. minute movie. Yeah. <coughs> five minutes? That is harsh. Just walked out. <laughs> what, you're in the cinema and you walked out? cinema and you walked out. No, I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> and that, it was, it was 10 minutes. What did you think of the Mario uh, trailer? No, I bet I'm fully on board for that. I think, yeah. But it went it went against your idea of what the plot was going to be, right? Yeah, I wanted it to go a lot more darker. And what was yours it, again? Uh, it was a more of a kind of following the lives of Chris Martinet and uh, Chris Pratt uh, working together. Ch- Charles Martinet. And um, yeah, Charles yeah. Martinet is trying to teach Chris Pratt how to do the voice. <laughs> but Chris Pratt is a bit young, you know, and he's messing around. And <laughs> Charles Martinet doesn't... Not a fan of that. So, But they, they hate each other at first, but by the end, of they... they so Mario is not in it at all. That it's literally just a film about how Charles Martinet... <laughs> of the and actors. Pratt are, 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 I, I don't think it is, Mario. <clears throat> it, it's... It's got Mario at heart, but it doesn't have to be about. It doesn't have to show Mario. I think it. I think a, a kids' film made by Illumination called the Super Mario Bro- Brothers movie. I think that probably should have. Would Mario your kids in it. be really disappointed then if it didn't have? Yeah, Mario I think in they'd it. be disappointed if. If it's just a drama if it between was two actors, Charles yeah. Martinet and Chris Pratt arguing about how that they should. But it'd be funny an- antics. Go on, give us an example of a funny antic from the, your film. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you can't get it out go on what happens in it yeah go on let's hear a scene just a scene in a bar go right. on okay yeah <laughs> so there's a scene in a bar right and just quick uh, Chris just quick. Pratt is just giving uh, grief to people <laughs> what do you mean what in the bar was he drunk uh, just, yeah he's kind of getting drunk you know what I mean right. and just not not being a like not being nice to people. Right. Did you nearly yeah. say being a prick and then you reined it in? Yeah, but because it's a kids' movie, isn't it? Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. okay. Did you do the whole thing like it's just one scene? Oh, well, like a one take. Yeah, call it waiting for Mario. Yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> Let's do that. And have loads of references. Maybe Charles Martinet could be doing oh, some well, plumbing. Well, 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 this one scene that we're describing here, all that's happened is Chris Pratt is being a prick to people. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, in that's, a bar. That's, that's it. That's all we need. So what happens? Well, like in the, they're on a road journey in their car. Okay. And, you know, Chris Pratt is just like listening to, you know, hip rock or something. And Charles Martinet is just like, oh, you should listen to classical music. This is, kind of... this is just a scene from Sonic movies. <laughs> is it? Isn't it? When they went to the bar? Is that what you're talking about? I didn't get that far. Just got... Okay, Okay. right. So so they're in a car. Charles Martinet is listening to, to classical music. But Chris Pratt wants to listen to rock music, did you say? Or hit... what did you say? Yeah. Right. Uh, so classical music. Okay. And then they go to... Wait, wait, they go to a bar... Yeah, well, that's it's just part of it. And Charles Martinet has a daughter, and when Charles Martinet dies later in the film, um, <laughs> the daughter it. becomes the voice of uh, Princess Peach. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you know she <laughs> continues the dream of Charles Martinet. So even though he's not in the Mario stuff anymore, the <laughs> essence of him is still in there. Cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. It would be one of those little indie films. You know, it wouldn't be massively popular, but it would get a lot of. Uh, I think that's a great that's, way I'm sure for the Mario series to kick off. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's what Nintendo wanted. We, we we want this to be like an indie film that not many people are into, but you know, 
gets yeah, like a gritty, like they, a gritty drama. It's like when they brought out the DS and they were like, oh yeah, we're doing another Game Boy. It's like, and, and then they sort of didn't. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah, they'll they'll make this film. Be like, yeah, no, you're gonna you're gonna get Mario film where he's being funny and he's doing stuff. <laughs> but <it's, laughs> they did the same. Well, in the meantime, they the Switch yeah. out, didn't they? They said, well, we're not done with the 3DS, guys. Mm. Like, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, no, you've been winding that down for a while. Yeah. Actually, looking up, I know this is going off a tangent. Looking up, did you know that there were characters in Pilot Wing 64, Sean? There yeah, there's yeah, the four Nintendo characters. Oh, actual Nintendo characters. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, and they, they they have not featured in any of the Smash Brothers, which is absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> but you know, that uh, there's a theme for them. One's called Lark. And one's called. Oh, the, the, the actual playable characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Goose, Ibis. You want to see the, what they look like as well? They look fucking. Yeah, terrible. no, I remember. Yeah, baby. Shocking. Yeah, because they all uh, had like different characteristics as well, didn't they? There were actual gameplay differences. I think right? so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I hope that answers your question, Maria. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot there was a question, wasn't it? What games do you play? Yeah. What old games? Cheers, do you play? Maz. Uh, Big Jim. Uh, so we'll, we'll, this came from Big Jim. We also got a similar one from Alex seventy nine. Uh, question for Capone. Love your podcast. Do you have anything new planned? Also, what's Graham like in real life? Uh, well, Graham is. Just me, but with a slow down. What? Oh, I didn't realise. We were... Okay. Breaking so kayfabe on that one. <laughs> he As does form. it on the show. I'll never forget. This was the greatest thing um, Capone Adam has ever done, right? Mm. When we were at... So if for the years, those of you that haven't heard Capone Adam's podcast, they tend to be him talking to a co-host called Graham Hunter, which is just Capone Adam's voice slowed down, right? That's <laughs> all it is, right? And all the way through... Right. <laughs> So there was a show on. I think I think it's a little bit more than that, dude. I think you're being a bit unfair, Adam. I think it's a little bit more than just his voice slowed down. No, that's literally what it is, Matt. The... Yeah, I think it's a little bit more thought into it and just. On no, Sean, okay. yep. at Play Radio, mm -hmm. they had a radio show that reviewed podcasts, right? right? So they'd have a, a a bunch of people. They would play clips and they'd talk about a podcast and blah blah blah. Adam submitted the Capone, Adam and Graham. Uh, Hunter show yeah. to be reviewed <coughs> and no word of a lie yeah. they were going I'm trying to work it out I mean I listened to one episode it's very bizarre it's very bizarre I'm trying to work out is Graham um, Hunter and Capone the same person yeah I couldn't work that it, it, it's, it might be I'm trying to... and they go okay let's roll the next clip the next clip was Capone Adam going <laughs> was Graham Hunter going but Capone, I'm just you with your voice slowed down. <laughs> no, you're not, Graham. You're more than that. I am. Let's give it up. <laughs> and then it went back to the thing and the panel were going, yeah, not quite sure. It does sound like him. And I'm going, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Maybe it's like a double bluff. Maybe this... <laughs> Knowing the host that hosted that show, that was not a double bluff, Sean. It was not a double bluff. Sorry, Capone. You've so, been a successful podcast recently on Philips Hue Philips lighting. Hue lights, yeah. Yep. And to up the do, charts. I do have ideas for a couple of new things. Um, the first one I might ask for help here, if anyone's listening. Like, so for the longest time, I've wanted okay. to make a. Dig. a uh, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's make... listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there'll be a few. Uh, <laughs> but wow. a Molidu podcast mm. uh, that I've wanted to do where I kind of fake his voice. <laughs> okay. And these days it is kind of possible with deep fake technology. So oh, I've doesn't tried the, to... it doesn't look the fucking software that uh, Kane and Rince pulled. Doesn't that do that? That does that, doesn't it? I've tried oh, really? a few things that are supposed to do it, like you add a 30-second clip of the, the person speaking or whatever, and it's supposed to figure it out. But Blimey. they're not very... I've not had much uh, success with that. Um, but I could have so much fun with that. <laughs> so if anyone out there knows, has any idea how to do uh, a parody, just have to make <laughs> that clear, a parody <laughs> of Peter Molyneux. <laughs> <laughs> struggle to say it then while well, he knew not do uh yeah that would be amazing because you know with the kojima podcast lately yeah that kind of made me want to really do it 
Have you, have you listened to any of that, Adam? No. No, me neither. The end of that uh, conversation. Um... I, I thought I would, and then I just, you know, because it's it's obviously Japanese is like the original one, and there is like an English version and a Japanese version, right? And I, I the English one is just really the it's like a um, can't remember what the word is, but it's you can hear him in the background, can't you? But it's like translated on the fly. Is that how it works? Yeah, and um, he's interviewing different people every week. I think is that's the idea. Do you think your Peter Molyneux one would be just like the one Molyneux talking into the mic? That's it. Or it could be interviews? like uh, keynotes, doing uh, interviews, um, doing you know, like TED talk kind of things. Workshopping ideas. Yeah. What's in the cube to? Uh, and then the other. Yeah, I don't think he liked that particular <laughs> idea, Matt. There, I don't know if you noticed that was kind of. I saw uh... him writing down actually. When you did the Phillips Hue um, podcast, did anyone get in touch and say, well, "Like, oh, we work for Phillips. What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> no. Because <laughs> didn't you have? Wasn't if I remember correctly, it wasn't, that popular. wasn't there an episode where you revealed that Graham Hunter had kidnapped the CEO of Philips Hue Lighting and kept him <laughs> in the basement? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you weren't signed up, Adam. Just to clever, you weren't signed up for <laughs> as the official Philips Hue podcast. podcast. <laughs> yep, they wanted nothing Mad. to do with me. That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> oh. um, um, and uh, for those of you that don't know. Adam also produced it. Peter Molyneux is not your only viral moment, is it? Remember your little, not? little little movie that you put together, Nintendo, a sad story. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that yeah. was so good. That got pulled at one point, didn't it, from YouTube? Ah, uh, yeah, but other people have uploaded it since. Yeah, but who pulled it? Did someone get in contact with you and take it down, or? I think it was Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo got it taken down. Yeah. I mean, it's not funny. I mean, it's not surprising because, yeah. you know, Shigeru Miyamoto is in his pants <laughs> smashing... Doesn't he smash Mario's head in at one point? I can't remember. Mario drugs him. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got uh, Reggie dressed up as Bowser kind of uh, just knifing Mario's face. Okay, um, uh, is that it for the questions? That's it for questions. <laughs> That's it for questions. Stop the kids. <laughs> Matt, um, <laughs> should, we, should we get to the socials? Well, I've just Googled Nintendo a sad story, and this is like a Reddit thread from 10 years ago. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, one person says, made me what the fuck pretty hard. Guess it's creepy, but couldn't tell if it's trying to be funny. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. <laughs> Um, one dude saying, I have the weirdest feels right now. Another one saying, I was 49 seconds in when I realized I was going to regret it. I do. It was ahead of its time. Yeah. <laughs> Someone saying, somebody seriously needs to explain this. No, oh, how no, it. is this? Oh, no, no, this is someone else. Uh, okay, right. Should we, um, should I read this plot summarization, Adam? You can tell me how on the ball it was. The plot I derived is that Miyamoto kept, um, I'll use a horrible word here. Um, the, 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 they kept uh, using Mario, out, put him out for games year after year into shitty games, but Mario planned on killing him and escaping with a princess. As Mario and, Prince, as Mario and Peach were trying to escape, they got caught by Miyamoto and Reggie, who tries to force Mario into another shitty situation. Miyamoto then has a moment of clarity where he sees how Reggie is treating Mario, his beloved creation, and he kills Reggie in Mario's defense. Miyamoto dies from the poison, and Mario is overcome with, by grief over how he killed his friend and creator, while Reggie was in fact the true bad guy. The film ends with Mario killing himself alongside Miyamoto's corpse. Does that nail it? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Miyamoto is being used as a puppet by uh, Reggie. That's yeah, why the, wasn't this at a Sundance the... Festival? I know, right? It's sure being picked up. <laughs> no, or maybe another time maybe Age 24 could do a remake. Let's, let's, uh, let's get to the socials, Matt. Yes, so Thursday, Sea of Friends is going to happen. Sean will be streaming Sea of Thieves at Thursday from 9. That's correct, isn't it, Sean? Yes, there is a new thing. I can't remember if it's, what, what do they call them, like an adventure or a mystery or one of those, a new thing that moves the story forward. So, yeah, I'm going to do, do that. 
Chat. Cool, cool. That's Thursday. Now, I know Farley stream because uh, Farley is away. So if you may, or if you want to watch it live, go to twitch.tv slash tcgsco. Uh, that's Thursday from 9. If you miss it live, the VOD will be on YouTube the day or so after that. Just search TCGS on YouTube. If you have Amazon Prime, though, you've also got something called Twitch Prime Gaming when you connect your accounts and you get one free sub every month. Connect your accounts, and we really appreciate everyone up to our, our channel when we're streaming or even not, and give us your free uh, prime sub um we're on patreon patreon.com slash tcgs for exclusive bonus podcasts um we're gonna do the gta heists this month as well and this yeah. content is now just staying on patreon it's not gonna go out on youtube so if you want to see that uh go over Whatever. to patreon and subscribe um and the website's tcgs.co for links to our beautiful discord go over there. loads of great chat hoping it happening in discord links to our store podcast socials um and Probably other stuff I've forgotten. Cool. Uh, Capone, thank you so much for joining Welcome. us. Is there anything you want to say, plug? What's, uh, what's the deal? What, what is it at TG, TCGSCO um, hashtag audio? TCGS. Audio clip. Uh, just wait for, the t- for them to tweet it out. Oh, right. We've got to tweet it out. Okay. Um, okay. Matt, you, you on that? Are you going to be able to tweet out the. Yeah, I've written down the hashtag, yeah. Cool. <laughs> and um, God knows what this actually sounds like when you get to it, but if you made it to the end, thank you so much for living it. We will catch you next week for more video game. Chit-chat. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Ta-ra. Ciao.